It's that time again for another not so normal gaming podcast featuring your hosts, Mr. Techno Squeak. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Nostalgic Dan One. Everything I feel is in this sword. Good. Come on. And Quick Freeze Four. Don't worry. I'll handle the bad guys. This is a podcast you want to listen to, but first, you gotta press start. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Press Start Podcast. I am Mr. Techno Squeak, and this is episode 49 yeah. of the Press Start Podcast. Mm. Woo! We're almost there. Ooh yeah. Ooh yeah. Ooh yeah. Yes. And we have both Nostalgic Dam 1 and yeah. Quick Freeze 4. Uh, How are you guys doing? I'm doing swell. Swell. <laughs> swell. And... We have a returning guest. Oh, no way. And really? he's been he's been on this podcast about 50 times. Yeah, exactly. That's the exact amount. <laughs> yep, 50 times. And it that... is Keith Monarch. You rock! Woohoo! Yay, How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Oh, oh my <laughs> God, come the on. Yeah, nope. no tradition. Okay, Man. I'm doing swell. Thank you, Dan. Swell. <laughs> Swell was advice for now. <laughs> We're trying to bring back Swell. That's pretty Swell. <laughs> Too pretty Swell. It's just it's a fancy word. Yeah. It's good to say. How are you doing, Mikey? What's going on with you, man? Uh, it's been summer, so oh. you know, playing a lot of games. You know. Same here. Yeah. So nothing's really been going on, really. Getting ready to go back to college next week. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Not looking forward to that, but hey, it'll be done before you know it, and then it'll be winter break, and then you'll be playing more games. Yeah, we have a fall break too, like during uh, October, and then a winter break. Nice, nice. Yeah. I'm pretty happy though. I'm in my third year, so I got nothing but like three art classes, a science class, and career development. Because I need. Yeah. To, oh no, like it. The art classes are fun, though. Those are fun. Oh, yeah. I, sp- I really can't wait because for mines, it's the studio I've been wanting to get into, and that's kind of what my major is, is 3D modeling and animation. So I'm looking forward I, to that. I, I could just imagine, imagine you just sitting in class, just drawing Tales of Vesperia all hour. What's going to happen? I'm going to make, like, an animation. Jury. It's going to be my jury. final project for that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think I have video art. I forget what it's called in... We work with Adobe CS6, interesting stuff, and art history. Got to have art history. Good stuff. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> what about you, Michael? What kind of classes are you taking? I'm taking, uh, since it's my second year, I'm going to be doing, let's see, a drawing class, like drawing basic 2D design. Oh, nice. So that is to get down the basics. I'm doing a creative writing class. <laughs> Easy mode. Interesting. <laughs> um, what else? Biology, which will be kind of dumb. I have biology. Um, math, and I think I'm doing another art history class. I took one last semester, and it's kind of a pain. Yeah, it really depends. We have a, a lot of different art histories. Like, I've taken, you know, anything from your basic renaissance to last year. I took the art of war and revolution, which is interesting. It covers all the art of just past wars and all that. And this year I think I'm taking 19th century. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. I have a busy schedule this semester. I'm t- like, you can have a possible 18 credit hours. I'm taking 16, so I'm pretty packed. I'm just trying to stay on the four-year track so bad. Yeah, that's what, that's what you got to do. Yeah. Saves you money, too. So. Exactly. I'm not trying to are, be there longer than I need to. Are you doing a lot of dorming, or yeah. is it just it's just so much easier because I usually have to get up early and all that, and it's just easier to have, you know, just be able to walk walk on campus from area to area, especially ASU. There's ASU's an awesome campus. There's so much to do on there. There's so many places to eat, even just outside of campus. There's like tons of restaurants, places to go. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good college. It's a good college. Like a bunch of my friends went there, and uh, I think I, I don't want to spoil this, but I think Gamester went there. Yeah, he did. I don't know. He used to uh, 
I think you played in band, like a marching band. Dang. Yeah, I remember. But, yeah. Good stuff. Yay, college. Good stuff. <laughs> Let's talk about some video games. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, no, Piva, college. Piva and Techno are like, what the hell is this? <laughs> what's, a, what's a college? I don't even know. Hey, I've been to college. <laughs> I've been to two colleges, all right? I know video that. games. <laughs> no, shut up. I've been to real colleges, and I know exactly what you guys are talking about. Shut up. Techno has no idea. He's lost. I, I say fuck college. <laughs> fuck that shit. <laughs> what are you talking about? College is awesome, dude. I, I went to college in 2000 and in 2002, and uh, they were awesome. Good years. Good times. Some of your best times. Techno just doesn't know because... He hasn't gotten a call. Dude, fuck this college bullshit. <laughs> let's play, let's fucking talk about games. Hey, we oh. are. The t- college kids are talking about video games, man. We used to yeah. play PlayStation 2 in my dorm. It was awesome. Yeah, original Halo. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You bring out uh, Super Nintendo, and they're like, what the hell is that? I'm like, hey. Dude, my, my roommate had the Sega Dreamcast, man. And oh, so awesome. And I had the PS2. We were, like, kind of competing which one was better. <laughs> well, I guess, you know, I won that. <laughs> oh, yeah, nope. don't, don't start this shit. <laughs> yeah, you want to talk about video games, right? So we're talking about video games now. No, I'm serious, oh, man. I, no, me and my roommate, we used to go to, um... This was when back, uh... Hollywood Video was still around. We used to go to, oh. uh... There every Friday night. And just rent games, like, for the weekend. And, like, he would always get, um... For some reason, he always liked Dynasty Warriors for the PS2. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I always got uh, Sonic Adventure for the Dreamcast, even though we had each other's... Like, we didn't have the system for those, like... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It was so funny. But, yeah, we used to rent games all the time in college. I wish wish you could still rent games these days. Like, you can, but... It's so much. It's so much different. Yeah. What is now, like game compared to that? Now? I used to rent. I used to rent uh, games from Hollywood Video back in the day because there was one down the street from us, and uh, I used to always get that game called Small Soldiers. Have you ever played that? Oh. Uh, yeah. So. Used to rent that Star Wars for the N sixty four. That's all I would ever rent is that and Dragon Ball Z, just VHS tapes and. Uh, and before they closed down, I got this uh, phone call from them. They're like, "Hey, you need to return this." And I'm like, "What do I need to return?" And they're like, "You need to return this Power Rangers game on the Super Nintendo." I'm like, "That was like eight years ago when I returned yeah. that shit." It's not gonna happen. When you guys close, I'll return it the day after. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could have uh, found out what they did with all their games once they uh, closed closed down Hollywood Video, though. Dumpster. Stop, yeah. <laughs> So go dumpster diving. Yeah, you'd be surprised what you could find in a GameStop dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, re- I remember the Vesperia poster. <laughs> they throw out like posters. I seen what they throw out. They throw out posters. They throw out game cases. They throw out a lot of stuff. And sometimes they throw out games with actual games in them. <laughs> like if they just don't sell well, they just want to get rid of them. Standees, they, everything. Tell you go surprised. dumpster diving. You'd be surprised at what you can get from GameStop because if you just go in and just go like, hey, uh, by any chance, when you guys get rid of the posters, uh, could you call me up and I, I could take them off your hands for you? Because I've got like at least 30 from GameStop alone. And they'll just give them right to you, but it's not like some of the locations are strict on it, though. Yeah. So. You, know, you, get, you get to know the people there because the, mm-hmm. the GameStop near my house, like I'm good friends with... At least, like, four people within that store. They know me by name. I know them by name. I have them on my Xbox friends list. And you, you got to get to know them. Because, like, I went in there asking for uh, a lollipop chainsaw, like, you know, display box. You know, those oversized ones. And yeah. uh, they gave it to me. As soon as, like, they took down the display, they just gave it to me. And it's right, right now, i got it hanging on my wall. Damn. So, like- yeah, it's best just to... Be friends with those guys because they'll hook you up. They really will. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Plus, it, if you're friends with them, you have a better shot of getting the stuff, like you were saying, because uh, some of them get dibs on it, and mm. they'll give you the trashy stuff if you're not friends with them. Because I've gotten a lot of like Monopoly and Mike, Michael Jackson posters and all these random game posters. 
from people I'm not friends with there. <laughs> so. Yeah. Like, but, I don't know, that's probably, like, one of the reasons why I don't really have bad experiences at GameStop is because I know the people there. So, mm-hmm. like, that's probably the best I g- give, best advice I can give to people. Like, if you hate GameStop, fine, you hate GameStop. You have your reasons. But if you become friends with the employees that work there, you can get some pretty cool shit. Like, I, like, my friend Kevin, who works there, uh, like, he gave me a second copy of the Game of Thrones art book that you were supposed to get when you reserved the game, the game, which I did. I reserved it. I got my first art book. But then he gave me a second one just out of the blue, like, yeah. a couple days later. So, like, yeah, be friends with those guys. Or just slide them a 20 under the desk if they're not friends with you. Say, hey, give me that poster or else. I don't know if a poster's worth $20, though. Mm-hmm. Sure. Depends on what it is, though. If it's, like, a Zelda one, like, uh, some of those cutouts you can get for pretty cheap. Like, I have a local game store up the street from me, and uh, if you slide them 15 bucks, they'll give you the cutouts. And I got a Call of Duty Black Ops one, and I almost bought a Skyrim one, but I didn't. Yeah, and the Sandys actually can be worth money down the road, particularly. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I, I never really had bad experiences with GameStop. I don't know anyone, but, like, I still... I'll try and strike up conversations about games or, like, just games I'm buying, and we'll talk about stuff. Yeah. It's little things. Even though I heard in a poll that GameStop was voted, like, number 10 or number 11 as the worst, you know, place to work, basically. <laughs> like, I think one of the worst ones was, like, some cable company or something. But, yeah, interesting fun fact. There's fun fact of the day from Nostalgic Dan. Yeah. But they're like they're like really pressured to get like you know the they upsell they the reserves and quotas. stuff yeah pre order quotas they have to upsell like crazy like uh, they like because they were telling me like if someone comes in and like uh, stop like stops a reserve on a game you know like they want their money back before the game come out that actually hurts the person who just happens to be there to do that transaction. Like for example, like for example, I'll just say random people say, person A rang up this this customer and sold them a reserve on Skyrim. Well, then like ten days later, that same customer came in and said, I don't want I don't want this game anymore. I want to cancel my reserve. Well, employee B is the one doing that transaction. That hurts employee B, not employee A. You know that like that. This is how that's how GameStop works when uh, when they do reservations and how they treat their employees because that's what my friends told me how it works and I believe them because they're you know I've known them for a while. Yeah, that's screwy. So I can see why they're strict and why it's one of the worst places to work. Yeah, they're under a lot of stress. I mean, yeah. The the same thing Clive said applies to other places too. Like they have quotas at like Toys R Us. Like they'll be like, you have to sell this much. No, just quotas uh, in all consumer businesses. I remember when I used to work at Harkins, uh, used to work at the concession stand, and you had quotas, you know, like you're, you had to sell like 10 pizzas a day or something, so I'd be asking, you know, almost like GameStop would do, like, hey, would you like a pizza with this order or something? And I felt kind of bad. I'm like, okay, I don't feel like asking this, but I still have to do it. Yeah, my uh, one of my first retail jobs was FYE, and like, you know, every time we answered the phone, we had to be like, you know, thank you for calling FIE where you can reserve, you know, whatever the movie was coming out, you know, that month. And my trick is, like, I always I always hated saying it, but the trick is I said it so damn fast that whoever <laughs> was on the phone could not understand me. So, like, I said it, but, like, they couldn't understand what I was saying, so, like, I kind of got, <laughs> I kind of got around it. What do you like to no, say? <laughs> like, I'll be like, uh, okay, I'll just use the the Avengers for example. I'll be like, hey, thanks for calling FYE, where well, you can reserve the Avengers, how can I help you? <laughs> like, that's how I would say it. I'm going to use that tip. <laughs> yeah, do it, just saying, Thank you. just do it incredibly fast. Just be like, hey, this is FYE, how can I help you, where well, you can reserve the Avengers, you know, like, just say it really fast. That's a good tip. And if your boss calls you out on it, it'd be like, well, I said it. What else do you want me to do? I speak fast. That's how I I spe- yeah, this is how I speak. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a very tip-heavy episode, guys, so take some yeah. notes. Exactly. Damn right. Te- techno, techno, give us a tip. Techno, what's your <laughs> tip? Come on. Don't be a lazy ass. Wow. Well, that, that's a given. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, yeah, but 
you never know. It's like the new Nostradamus over here. <laughs> He's very wise. So how about that Super Nintendo, you know? That one console that came out like a couple no! years ago. No! What about <laughs> That's it? That's pretty awesome, you know? Yeah, I pre-ordered it yesterday. That's better than that little black box or whatever. No, <laughs> it's not! <laughs> no. Yeah, it is. You don't know what I'm talking about. I could be talking about Xbox or something. I don't even know what you're talking <laughs> or about. Or PS3. Dude, the Xbox isn't little. I said just little black box. Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo? Yeah, ABGN has been doing videos recently. I saw that. They're really interesting. Yeah, I like this like old school footage of like himself. <laughs> He's like even back then he was still like ranting and all that. <laughs> it's yeah. pretty cool to see. The Sega Genesis versus the Super Nintendo? Yeah. It should turn that into a cross fighter game there. Yeah, Capcom make it make it Capcom. <laughs> I know, that's the thing. The Capcom had Super Nintendo mostly, and then Konami had the Sega Genesis. Yep. Pretty much. Yeah, and I some... love Super Nintendo. Like, there's so many good Capcom games on it, like uh, that Mickey's Magical Quest. Oh, I love that game. It's amazing. I can't yeah. wait for the Power of Illusions to come out. Yeah. Is that supposed to pay homage to uh, that game, or I heard it's supposed to pay homage to one of the older games. Is it supposed to... I think, it, I think it's Magical... No, what? Yeah, it's Magical Quest, isn't it? It's either that or I heard, uh... What's the other Mickey game? It's on the Genesis. I thought yeah, like Castle of Illusion Castle. or something? Yeah. Yeah, it's probably that one, but... I still have to but, it, but it has the paintbrush, like, in Epic Mickey, though. Hmm. That's weird, that's weird. I haven't played it, Epic Mickey, but I've heard it's actually good, so... It is good. I, I've played it and beaten it. It's really good. Hmm. Never so. played that. You should. It's probably, like, really cheap now, too. Yeah, it's been out for a while. Yeah. I like my Super Nintendo. I mean, that was a console for me. Got me into gaming. Because I had the NES, and I only played the NES for, like, a year, so I didn't really get an attachment to it. Even though I played awesome games, you know, I had all the classics, like Mario Bros. 3, Adventure Island, Donkey Kong Classics, you know, I had Contra, you know. So I had fun with that, but... Then I got the Super Nintendo, and I had that for, like, almost two or three years and playing that, and absolutely loved it. It's just really a unique library of games and just a unique style in general. Like, it just has different, a different kind of style as opposed to Genesis, you know, just color-wise, sprite-wise, and the music is completely different between the two. I kind of prefer the music of the Super Nintendo, but so much going for the Super Nintendo. Like, yeah, you, you have all the great RPGs. You know, from the really awesome stuff to, like, even the lesser-known RPGs like Lufia and Breath of Fire, you know, Robotrek, stuff like that. But just a lot of awesome games. And, you know, even though some games came out on both systems, there are some games that are completely different on both systems, like Aladdin. You know, well, Aladdin on the Super Nintendo is just a platformer by Capcom, but Aladdin on the Genesis is like a hack-and-slash kind of game. Hell yeah. I know Techno hates the Genesis thing. So. No, it's cool. God it's cool damn time. it! Techno hates the Genesis, really? Yeah, he told no. me yesterday. He's like, man, screw it. There, there's no Sonic on the Super Nintendo. No, <laughs> it could be. <laughs> Someone actually ported uh, Sonic over to the NES. Yeah, yeah. I have that cartridge. <laughs> That is amazing. Yeah, it's actually a pretty good port, too. Does it run pretty well? Yeah, actually it does. I did a first impressions of it. It's well, really good. What Was that a pun, Dan? <laughs> oh, 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 I didn't even Sonic intend can to run? <laughs> no, I didn't intend it to be. I was just curious because I like, no, <laughs> no, I no blast I... processing. <laughs> Game blast process. you right now. Dude, that blast processing was such a joke. Holy shit, that's all I had on the Super Nintendo, that's all I had. I don't know, but the Sega Genesis wasn't all that bad. Like, I prefer the Super Nintendo over the Sega Genesis myself, but the Sega Genesis wasn't that bad. It had, like, you know, like, the probably the best thing I liked about it was the clamshell cases. Yeah, that's one of the awesome things is it's obviously a lot easier to find complete Genesis games as opposed to complete Super Nintendo games, because... I think Clamshell is brilliant. I mean, it's kind of like the style we use today with, like, regular cases. It's like you're not really going to throw out a case. Some people may lose a case. Some people actually do throw out cases. I don't know why, but 
Yeah. Uh, it create like clamshells just means it'll stay intact for a while because people really aren't going to get rid of those. First thing everyone did as a kid was open up those cardboard boxes and throw their games out. Like I, I kept a bunch of mine, but majority of people just ripped open those boxes because they're so excited to play it, and then the parents threw them out or whatever. So yeah. those clamshells were really smart. So. I don't know, like, what, what I liked about the Sega Genesis the most, though, it came with so many accessories. Like, oh, the, yeah. it had the activator, it had, uh, well, Sonic and Knuckles was kind of like an accessory, and a game combined in one. You know, it had, it had like, a six-button controller, you know, to compete with the Super Nintendo. It had, you know, then the 32X, the Sega CD. Yeah. You know, sure, those are just kind of, like, add-ons, but it had, like, a lot more accessories. So I thought that was kind of cool. Super Nintendo didn't really have any accessories. It had, like, the Super Scope 6, okay. the Super Game Boy. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Super Game Boy was amazing. I don't know. And that, like, that was pretty much it, really. It's like, really, Sega, you couldn't come up with some way to play Game Gear games on your Genesis. Like, really? Really? But, yeah, so I like the I like the Genesis, too, even though, like, I, I only have mine for, like, two years now, but I still have built a pretty big library of games already in. Even now, I can see a big difference between the look, the style, and the types of games that are on them. Sega seems to be, especially with the Genesis, more home for really arcadey stuff and stuff like that, like shoot 'em ups and beat 'em ups, especially. And you know, it's really interesting. I have a lot of games I really like. It's a lot of sports games, a lot of them. Yeah, Sega's had tons of the sports games. Yeah. I don't know what Techno is our Sega guy. What does he have to say? Well, it didn't have, you know, a way to play Game Gear, but it did have where you could play Master System, which is pretty much yeah. a Game Gear. But so it's yeah, that was, um, but it's not licensed. No, yeah. what what was that thing called? A that power you, base converter. Mm -hmm. Power base converter. Yeah, uh -huh. that thing was cool. I never had it, but it was still cool. No, yeah, it's a cool concept. The Super yeah. Nintendo had the Super 8 or whatever, but it's not licensed. That would let you play NES games. And it, they had two of them. One that, you know, the one everyone knows that can only put, you can only put it on the Model 1. And they made one which I've never seen with, you know, <laughs> like, up close for just the Model 2. The smaller that. Genesis. Yeah, Super yeah. Nintendo. Super Nintendo should have had a CD base at home. No, that went. I don't, think it need it. I don't think it would need it. No, it, 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 we, it had it. It came out. <laughs> it's a Nintendo PlayStation. That's what it should have been. Nintendo PlayStation. Nintendo PlayStation. That's what it was. Do you guys not know that? Yeah. No. yeah. I do. Really? Uh, the, the Sony PlayStation was going to be the Super Nintendo CD base at home to compete with the Sega CD. Oh, look, that, okay. Yeah, because so, Nintendo actually used to work with Sony really close, especially with the audio kind of technology. Sony was really ahead of the time with, so, like, mm -hmm. audio qualities, and they were they like, They all hey. fucked it up with damn Philips. Yeah, they wanted, like, a CD, a CD-based system, but then Nintendo said no because Sony wanted, like, rights to be able to make Mario games and stuff like that, and they're like, no. And then Sony's like, I guess we don't need you. We have a system made. We can do this on our own. And Nintendo created their own competition. <laughs> Which is amazing. Dun, dun, dun. Can you imagine if that came out like it was a Nintendo PlayStation? As of now, the only competitors would be Nintendo and Microsoft. There'd be no Sony. I don't know, I don't there. know what it would possibly be. It'd be like the Nintendo PlayStation 3 or something. <laughs> Can you imagine playing Mario like already, like in HD and stuff? Like it'd be weird. Yeah. I think it would be totally different version. Like I don't think Mario would be the same. Probably not. Think of it like this too. Uh, a lot of Final Fantasies went over to Sony too, and if you remember before that, they were on Nintendo exclusive to that. You know. Yeah. So I wonder how that would change. Well, it'd just be on it. Period. But um, do you guys remember the N64, how, uh, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but FF7 was actually supposed to be on the yeah. N64. Have you guys seen the tech demo for that? I don't want to yeah. see that. It's going to be horrendous. It, 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 it's not that bad looking at all. Like, it's not bad. Hmm. But it wouldn't fit on a cartridge like that at oh, all. Oh, I bet. 
being <laughs> like a special cartridge as big as hell. <laughs> or or instead of like you know how they do two discs, it'd be like two cartridges and <laughs> like get a box. Yeah, this is Final Fantasy Seven Part One and Two. This Probably need like ten cartridges. <laughs> I, I think they would have um, they would have went with the 64 if the uh, 64DD didn't fail. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff planned for the 64DD. Yeah, they had uh, that F Zero game supposedly on it. Yeah, F Zero X, and um, that's um, I forget what they called it, but it was. Uh, like, um, make your own Zelda, Zelda, um, oh, yeah, I know or, or a Zelda, what it, which became Majora's Mask. I remember that F-Zero, the big deal with the 64DD version was you can yeah, make your you own levels. It. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Which I think Jason Hani has that, or, I know John Gamester. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. John has everything. <laughs> Name a console, he's got it. Uh, he doesn't have the Pandora. No. Uh, oh. <laughs> Poor John. Sorry, gangster. Yeah, but Genesis. You know, you know, I fucking I don't like that name. Genesis. You don't like Genesis? No. I like Neptune. I wish Neptune is a badass name for a console. I wish yep. they would have kept the just. The name Mega Drive. It's yeah, Mega. That is pretty beast. Mega Man on the Mega Drive. <laughs> I can imagine the commercials. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mega. <laughs> yeah, they only had one game for that too, for that system. Yep. The Wily Wars. Yep. 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 Did mm. you buy that? Yeah, yeah I, 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 I have the Wily Wars. Yeah. Nice. It's basically, um, uh, it's like th four games in one. It's like Mega yeah. Man 1, 2, 3. three and, and then like there's some special. Yeah, it's like, um, I forget the name of it at the moment, but the fourth game is you, it's Wally's like... Wally's Tower or something? I think so, yeah. It's, it's one where you get to pick like, f f it's either six or eight different robot master powers, and you, you, those are the powers you get to play with uh, throughout the entire game, and you get to pick like five different power ups, like like rush power ups, and that's what you get yeah. in the game. It, it's it's unique and cool because like, you know, it's the only game where you can combine um, like top man's top spin with uh, cut man's cut blade. It's cool. Yeah. Like, and the only way you, you can play it in America would be, er, at the time, was on the, um, Sega channel, which yeah. I never had. Bullshit. Which, yeah, I, I got the actual card of it now, it's like a repro, it's a reproduction yeah. card. Yeah. I'm satisfied with it. <laughs> there weren't a lot of, like, unlicensed Genesis games, but, like, I found this one Genesis game that I came across... It was two dollars. I'd never seen a car like it. Yeah, and I looked it up, and it's like a piece of shit game. But <laughs> but what's interesting is it's made by a company called Realtek, and it's actually an unlicensed Genesis game. It wasn't licensed by Sega. It came out illegally somehow. It was made in Taiwan, which it says on the back. And then for some reason, it won't play on my Genesis. I'm assuming that's because it's unlicensed. But I looked up footage. It's like two games. One of them you're like popping balloons, and I think the other you're like shooting penguins or something <laughs> with a shotgun or something. It's like a really weird game, but I'm like, it got me thinking. I'm like, wow, I didn't know they were like unlicensed Genesis games. Like, I've never seen a car like this. This is a weird car. I, I think that Balloon game's the prequel to uh, Made with Balloons. Maybe. <laughs> but apparently, um, apparently Real Tech was like the 10 gen for Sega because they made other li unlicensed Sega and Genesis games for them. <laughs> It's weird though, like I've never seen anything like that. Pretty unique. There's actually some good unlicensed games out there. Yeah. I don't I don't mind them. The ten game games. There's some good ten game games for Daniels. Pac Man. Yeah. Yeah, and wasn't like some people say the Tengen uh Tetris is better 
Yeah, because that's like yep. the original one. Yeah. Um, did you guys ever play the, um, that, um, uh, Micro Machines game on Genesis where it was, it was a weird looking cartridge and it had like, uh, two, um, where you can plug in two oh, yeah. controllers. I've seen carts on, like on the cart, yeah, so you could have weird. four players. That's a cool way of doing that. I mean, you don't have to buy a multi-tap, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I've seen, the, I've, I've seen other cards like that. They're really weird. <laughs> I've never played that game. It's fun. <laughs> oh, I don't, doubt, I don't doubt that. I just never played it. I don't know, like, my, my mostly, mostly my childhood was, like, the Super Nintendo, really. Like, I did have a Sega Genesis, but my Sega Genesis library back then consisted of... Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, Sonic, um, that's pretty much it, really. Oh, and Aladdin, I had Aladdin back then, but my Super, yeah. Super Nintendo, I had everything, I had Final Fantasy, I had Street Fighter 2, mm -hmm. I had Secrets of Evermore, Mario, Mario RPG, like, Zelda, Super Metroid, but, like that that was my whole like library, my whole childhood right there. So it was a good system. Good system. Yeah. But, but I, I still like the Sega Genesis. Like X X Men for the Sega Genesis was just totally yeah. awesome. Hell yeah. So I don't know. They're great games for the Sega Genesis. Some shitty ones too. No, a lot of shit. No. Same could be said for both of them. Yeah. Like Sonic Three, that one was a piece of shit. That's what? Sonic and Sonic what? And Knuckles. <laughs> oh. No, no. Sonic no, and Knuckles. No. Yeah. The whole <laughs> the whole Sonic franchise that was kind of a shit thing. One game with a stupid little blue hedgehog. Yeah, what's yeah. up with that? It's like really that, a blue hedgehog. Like and girl. that one ugly girl named Amy. What's mm -hmm. what's the deal with her? Screw that! That was the best part of it. So, ha, Mikey, you suck. <laughs> uh, no, I like the Sonic games. My favorite Sonic one was 2. Yeah, mine's 2. So, I did like Sonic and Knuckles as well. Do you guys remember that commercial for Sonic and Knuckles with, like, the yeah. Santa Claus and the elves? Yeah. Mm hmm I love that commercial. Yeah, they, like, make Sonic and Knuckles and... Santa Claus is like, ah, whatever, and then they sold sold the idea to Sega and got rich. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the best commercial. <laughs> I wish they could bring back classic commercials like that, though. There's, like, nothing like that anymore. Yeah, you can always watch them on YouTube, but yeah. they're not... And video game commercials nowadays are just, like, trailers, but... There's nothing, like, memorable. Like, there's so many memorable commercials, like the original Super Smash Bros. commercial where they're walking down oh the hill God. together, and they, like, trips each other, and then they just start fighting. It's, like, really... I mean, those are amazing. They were all creative. in face. You guys remember the Super Metroid commercial? Where, like, there was, like, I don't know, some sort of monster behind the door, and they put a dog in there or something? Oh, yeah. The dog transforms into some hideous beast when it comes out? Yeah. At least that's how I remember it. There's some memorable commercials. Definitely not the same nowadays. Nope. I hardly even see commercials anymore on TV, but that's probably because I don't watch a lot of TV anymore. I don't think anyone does. Yeah. It's all on the internet now. That's true. So, so, in your opinion, guys, what's better? Sega? <laughs> Turbo Graphics 16. That's not <laughs> one of the choices. Hey, that is Atari not Jaguar. one of the choices. Those are <laughs> not the choices. Turbo Graphics. Chris Bucci are... would be proud. <laughs> you guys are ruining the Sega. He's just sitting there listening to the podcast right now. Sipping like, wine. Yes. Like a yes. like, sipping wine and smoking a cigar sipping. like Turbo <laughs> Graphics. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, Super Nintendo. Easy. Super Nintendo. Super. Sega 32X. <laughs> Sega 32X. All that shit leeching off of Genesis. <laughs> Genesis, bitches. Genesis is... I don't know. Genesis is <laughs> Mega Drives. 
<laughs> Keith Apicary sitting at home clapping the Techno Squeaks response. <laughs> He's like, heck yes. But, so, yeah. I don't know, they were both great systems, though, in their own way. Oh, for sure, I think we could say the gaming industry and all of the memorable games we have now wouldn't be the same if one of those systems was missing. It really wouldn't. The yep. whole culture would be different. Mm. That whole 16-bit wars yeah, was the best. 16 the bit era. wars, yeah. Yeah. 16-bit era is still my favorite era. It's proven when there's competition, both the competitors put out better yeah. products. And yes, that's why I still miss when yep. Squaresoft and Enix were separate. Man, you talk about two RPG juggernauts going at it to make the best RPGs, and now they don't have that competition anymore. Like, there, there is no competition anymore. Like, seriously, like, Xbox versus PS3, that's like, I don't know. That's not yeah, really a competition. Like, They're the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the Sony and Microsoft should, like, do those commercials that Sega did back in the day. Well, you like, know. Xbox don't? <laughs> Xbox yeah. 360 does, but PS3 don't. <laughs> like, Hell yeah. yeah. They tried to do that with the Kevin Butler commercials. And some I of love the Kevin good. Butler commercials. Yeah. See, I give Sony credit for See, that, because yeah. they still had, like, creative commercials. I love Kevin Butler. He's awesome. <laughs> or, like, when they were paying homage to the gamer and, like, all those commercials they had about you, the gamer. For Michael. Yeah, yeah for Michael. <laughs> this is, like, rather gamers. <laughs> Yeah, see, Sony was creative with the commercials. You just mentioned Square uh, and Enix. What did, like, what did Enix make before it combined with Square? They made all the great Dragon Super Quest. Nintendo games. They made, yeah, they had Dragon Quest before there were Square Woo! games. They did Evo, the Search for Eden, stuff like RoboTrack on the Super oh. Nintendo. They were really unique, and they, they were quite different as opposed to Square, what they were doing. They had a distinct style of doing stuff. Yeah, Square was more, like, Square got big here in America, which Enix didn't really. No, never. Okay. Their games weren't too as well received as... Because I know, because Square did, like, Final Fantasy and shit, that's the only thing I know of. Yeah, Mario RPG. Mario. They did, like, the Illusion of Gaia series on the Super yeah. Nintendo Soul Blaster. Yeah, Booster, terrible it's thing. Secrets of Evermore. Yeah. Secret of Mana. You know, yeah. Okay, no, I was just I forgot what Square, uh, what Enix made. Good old Act Razor, Seven I know, Saga. I, never, I didn't play those. I a lot of unique games. Brain Lord, oh shit, oh. I bought that. Bringing back yeah. memories. Good game. I really <laughs> want Evo the Search for Eden so bad. Oh, I fucking want that game. The OG Star Ocean man, good stuff. <laughs> I still have one of the, I think, one of the last games that Squaresoft did. It's kind of hard to believe, but Squaresoft published a racing game, like, on the PS2, when they were still Squaresoft. Like, they weren't Square. Oh, yeah. Stuff. that I, um... I have it. It's called Driving Emotion Type S. And I'm like, hey, Squaresoft. I bought it just kind of for that purpose. I'm like, hey, it's Squaresoft on a PS2 game. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Like, they weren't Square Enix. Yeah, yeah and um, I believe Kingdom Hearts, the first one, they were still Squaresoft. Yeah, and they probably you might be right about that. Because it was really early on with the PS2 when they were still Squaresoft. It happened a little, like, halfway through that lifespan when they merged. Hmm. Wait, wait a second. Is FF10 done by Squaresoft, or is it Square Enix at that point? I'm trying to think. I think, maybe, I think it's Squaresoft. It's Squaresoft, yeah. Final Fantasy X is still Squaresoft yeah. at that time. See, there were a couple of, like, the earlier PS2 games by Square were still Squaresoft. Halfway through, they merged with Enix. Yeah, I don't think it was a good idea for them to merge. They should be separate, but I think it, from Enix's standpoint, it probably yeah, was a good idea because I think they were hurting for money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. their, their games were not popular stateside as opposed to Square's games, and... They were kind of hurting. They did well in Japan, but just stateside, they didn't do too well. So they merged. That was a good idea. And they still do good stuff, but every now and then they publish stuff that's not up to par. Or just really out there. But hey, good stuff. 
Square Enix gave life to Sleeping Dogs. That game was dead if it wasn't for Square Enix. Mm-hmm. You, you wouldn't have seen that game. Yeah. I, I haven't even seen any footage from that game yet, but I've been hearing a lot from it. I'm actually really interested. <laughs> it looks insanely fun. Like, it looks like it, it would give Grand Theft Auto V a run for its money. It's stepping up the game of sandbox games, like what they can do. Yeah. I, I heard they wasn't Wasn't Sleeping Dogs a... Uh, true Crime. Bef- yeah, True Crime. a True Crime game before. Oh. Yeah, I remember playing the old True Crime on PS2. Yeah. That was, was it New York or something? True Crime New York? Or... That was the second one. What was the first one? I played the first one, whatever that was. That was Streets of L.A. Yeah, that's the one. I remember that. Good stuff. Because uh, I played the crap out of that on Xbox. Yeah, that was fun. I remember that. All right. All right. I think I think it's time for some gaming news. Don't tell Techno what to do. Sorry, Techno. <laughs> I, I apologize for my rude behavior. Well, how that's in, fine. How inconsiderate because, of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, do yes. you have a Vita? No. <laughs> no. No. Well, when you get one, you can pre-order Persona 4 Golden <gasps> oh, for a uh, Vita skin. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, <laughs> it's the same skin from Japan, people. So, like, I'm sure a lot of people have seen it. That exact same skin they're gonna is going to be a pre-order bonus. It's actually a nice-looking skin, too. It's not cheaply made. I think it's kind of hard plastic but and also if you pre-order it i think you get access to like eight exclusive wallpapers yes. that match the kind of like overlay yes eight matching wallpapers now i don't know what the fucking characters are because i've never played a persona game you know so, yukiko uh nato uh no. chie uh nope um a teddy can't go wrong with teddy Rise. who else Am I missing? I don't think, I think it's it. And now it's his persona. Um, um, Yusuke and Kanji. Yeah, it's all done and done. <laughs> if persona was a, a thing they taught in school, you'd probably get A's in that. Uh, I'd teach it. I'd be a teacher. <laughs> you'd have a degree in it. Degree oh, in personas. Doctor Nostalgic Dan. Yeah. I'm a little worried about the video. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I uh, just just wait till uh Ease four comes out. That's not gonna make a difference and that's it <laughs> confirmed. It's not even confirmed yet, so people What? It's, it hasn't been goodness. confirmed. It, if anyone picked it up it would be Exeed and look at what Exeed does now. They don't do physical releases anymore. With the exception of a few, like the last story which came out and they're doing Ragnarok Odyssey on the Vita, but they're a digital company now. If they if they brought it out it might be a digital only game. Well, do you think they'll, uh, so they haven't picked it up at all? No one's picked it up, it's just in Japan right now. There's never been a confirmation for it. It needs to happen, because it's never, Force never been out here, has it? Mm, I don't think. No, no. not yeah. four. I, know I six. think it's been translated, like yeah. translated by some people. What's the one I don't remember is East Five. What is that? Because I know it was on the Super Nintendo. What was? Oh yeah, is that the? I remember now. It's called like something Mask of the Sun or something like that. Something I don't remember. I remember seeing a repro for it, and I remember I wanted to buy it. But yeah, I know E Six is Ark in the Pitch, and that was on the PS2, PSP. Yeah. New E Seven. One or two consoles. PSP and... Oh, is number three. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, the reason I say the Vita's hurting is because there's no games coming out. <laughs> like, look at the lineup. There's really nothing. And this, at this point, yeah. th- if you look at the 3DS, there's like, this is when the 3DS was starting to get its legs. It was starting to get like a bunch of third-party support, games coming out, which it has a really good library now. And the PS Vita is still hurting. Like, Sony hasn't released a new game for a while, and I don't think they have a new one planned unless there's, like, a Soul Sacrifice game for the Vita that they're making, but I don't even know when that comes out. Persona 4 to Golden, Ragnarok Odyssey, and that's pretty much it. Like, there's... Assassin's Creed. Yeah, but not a lot of people are going to pick that up. 
it's just PlayStation like, All Star. I, I know that they might have that on there, like cross platform. Yeah, games. but they need fresh games. They can't be porting yeah. games that are like done, been there, done that. Like they need some new exclusives, and they're not doing that. And that's a bad sign. I think the Vita's hurting, as you can tell from some of the sales. I, I give the it's, Sony if they don't do something with the Vita soon, like a price cut, they're gonna be hurting from that Vita. They need RPGs on it, because, like, P and the PSP was an RPG powerhouse. And what I find I funny is that with the Vita is people are reluctant to go over to the Vita. Like, Atlas is still like, hey, we'd rather make some PSP games still and keep the PSP on life support, basically. And the, they're like, we'd rather do that as opposed to make new games for the Vita. And stuff like Axie is doing the same thing, and even Aki is sort of like, I mean, Atheist is making one of the last PSP games, which comes out in November, called Ragnarok Tactics, and that's going to be the final game for the PSP, a physical release. So, but like even then, they're like, we'd rather make some PSP games instead of a Vita game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they need yeah. that third-party support, and it's not there yet. I don't know. Who knows, how. Who knows if they'll get it either? You know. Yeah, I want to see yeah. it succeed. I like, it's just, it's not shaping up well. Not at all. Um, do you think if XC does pick up Ease 4, do you think um, it might come to Steam? Mm. Since it, they're, you know, a digital company? They're a digital company and they're starting to release a lot more games on Steam, like Open for Ghana wasn't there before. PSP was the only way to play it. They did that. And Ease Origin is a complete a PC exclusive, but I don't know. Yeah, I never. I wouldn't put it past Sexy. They're a digital company. I I know so a lot more companies are starting to branch out to digital, you know, exclusives like that too. Didn't EA do that? Go digital? Mm, well, they do a lot of digital with their new Origin service because of that mainly. Yeah. They don't do manuals anymore, that's for sure. <laughs> They're like, screw manuals, you can just go look at it on the internet. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's all because of that origin service that they're providing that. They're trying to encourage a lot more digital sales. It's just pretty scary. It's going that way, get ready yeah. for digital. Get yeah, right. Nothing cloud we can do death. about it either. The cloud of death. <laughs> Be gaming from the clouds. I don't want that to happen. <laughs> what other news you got, Techno? Uh, well, if you were excited for Castlevania Lords of Shadow, mm -hmm. Mirror of Fate, mm -hmm. well, it's delayed into 2013. Well, oh, yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Well, Mirror of Fate well. was for 3DS and originally was announced for fall of 2012, but... Now, it's 2013, so... Wasn't there recently a list that came out of a bunch of 3DS games and confirmed dates for them? Like, I know Super Mario, uh, Paper Mario Sticker Star comes out in November now. It's got a confirmed date. And some other... You... Really? I went on Amazon. They don't have a date for that yet. No, they dropped a lot. Someone dropped a whole list of, like, confirmed dates for all these 3DS games. That's, like, November, I think. Um, there's some games missing too that's kind of important from the list is there was no Animal Crossing on the list so they're thinking that's way off and there's some other oh Luigi's Mansion Luigi's Mansion was not on the list which is kind of weird because they're thinking Luigi's Mansion 2 is coming out next year now <laughs> like it's been pushed back but right let's see yeah there's some list I forgot what it was so I forgot who posted it yeah I, I just remember Paper Mario because I really want that game. It comes out. Yeah, I want that game too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any more news, Techno? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My uh, well, um, if you've seen um, Pete Doerr's little news video, uh, you know that the Neo Geo X is coming out and will oh, be yeah. worth two hundred dollars. <laughs> Much better five hundred. <laughs> but you also get a like a V 
big old thing which looks like uh, the Neo Geo console, like yeah, the awesome. MVS, and a uh, arcade stick, just like the original N Neo Geo. And you put, you know, your little handheld in it, and then you can play all your games on, you know, the big screen. Yeah. So that's awesome. It's got HDMI out too, so it looks yeah. nice. Yes. Pretty yeah, it's, awesome. It's really cool. I like that idea of the charging station and all that. And it comes with 20 preloaded games, including such hits as Fatal Fury, mm. Fatal Fury Special, oh, King yeah. of Fighters 95, mm. and World Heroes <laughs> Perfect. Oh, heck yes. If you like fighting games, there's like nothing but fighting games almost on the list. There's some like puzzle games on there, but a lot of classic fighters are pre-programmed. But isn't this console going to have a SD card slot yeah, so you does. can... Yeah, yeah. It, can. it has an SD card slot, I've seen the picture. So you should be able to run ROMs is what everyone's yeah. assuming. I think I'm on about this. Yeah, go for it. It's a good alternative, because the Neo Geo is pretty tricky to buy for. Like, the system itself is pretty expensive still, and it depends what... Unless you buy, like, the Neo Geo CD, if you want those, like, yeah. AES cards, and those are expensive. Because they're big-ass cards, and they're heavy as hell, and so shipping goes up pretty quick on those. So. Yeah. Does the, um... <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> No idea. My dog is growling. Okay. Stop um, looking mad. I got one more question about this. Yeah. Is the control stick just like the pocket? Because it, if it is, then it's like instant buy. Because I love no fucking around with this. Apparently no one said, like no one's actually had an official hands-on with the handheld. So no one actually knows how the handheld feels, how it responds and all that. I'm assuming so because I love the micro switch <laughs> analog stick. That click, click, click. Yeah. Because yeah, I bought my Neo Geo Pocket, I didn't know that, and I started playing with this Neo Geo stick. I'm like, hey, clicks. <laughs> Feels like an arcade stick. Yeah. And that is it with my news. Good job, Techno. I'm proud of you, man. Woo! High five! Explosions everywhere! <laughs> you, you should, Techno should be an anchor man now. Yeah, but I guess some news stories. I mean, first one's not necessarily a news story. It's just a sad farewell to some awesome guys in the YouTube gaming community and just the gaming community in general. And that's the Retro Hunters and, you know, Rob and Josh. They said they're calling it quits after, you know, two some odd years of doing the show. Dang. Calling it quits. I and mean, they had a lot of reasons, but... Yeah, if you don't know the Retro Hunters... I think the Game Chasers before the Game Chasers existed, so like they would go to flea markets, they had this interesting concept called the five dollar challenge where, you know, if they could buy an item for each other that they had to incorporate on themselves, but it had to be under five dollars. So they wound up buying like random stuff, like I don't know, just like a Barbie doll that you have to carry around the whole day or something. But they're just really cool guys, they're really cool personalities, just a lot of fun to watch. I remember watching I've been watching it for a while, since the, before the Game Chasers, and when the Game Chasers came along, I was like, hey, cool, it's like more of this, but with a different kind of style, so... It's sad to see them go. It's sad to see any, any big, like, kind of name like this from the gaming community leave. They were also part of Screw Attack, so you could have caught a lot of their content on Screw Attack. There, there's a bunch of YouTubers that have been leaving lately that have been on YouTube for years, and it's part of the reason is time and money and all that other stuff, but... But it's sad to see. Yeah, definitely. They inspired a lot of people, you know? Like you said, they inspired the Game Chasers to some extent, yeah. you know? Well, even the Game Chasers came out in the first episode, like, you know, someone beat us to it, and then they talked about the Retro Hunters. So they're really awesome guys. I like them a lot. It's really cool down there, guys. But yeah, on to some other news. Sony has a really interesting platform coming out, but it's a downloadable title. And it says, the article reads, while well, the last Guardian is nowhere in sight. Hmm, let's just leave that at that. <laughs> the Sony Japan Studios is working on a neat project called Rain, which is announced at Gamescom. And it's a 
PS3 downloadable game. It's basically, the concept is you play as this invisible boy, and it's raining. Like, so the only way you can actually see the boy and what you're doing is when he's in the rain. So, like, if he goes over underpass, it cuts off. You can't see what you're doing. If he goes, like, under light, you can't see what you're doing. So it's really interesting. This is exactly why I love the PS3s, because they're unique downloadable games. Stuff like Flower and Journey and, like, just exclusive stuff. And Sound Shapes, which I've been playing a lot, which I'll talk about in games we've been playing recently. But they're just so unique and innovative with their downloadable games. And I'm definitely very interested in this. It looks gorgeous, too, by the way. So look for that. It's called Rain. And in my last bit of news, we have a new localization confirmed. For all you niche RPG fans, Takitoa has been confirmed, or it might be better known as Time and Eternity. And basically what this was is, if you remember, is it's a RPG, turn-based RPG, where it, it's, it's a first, it's an ambitious kind of thing they went for, but the whole game is hand-drawn animated, like everything from the cutscenes to walking around the town to the battle sequences that's all hand drawn animation there's not there's no character models it's all hand drawn so it was a really unique ambitious concept and it, i watched a trailer for it the japanese trailer for it and it's actually even with like and likes and dislikes on youtube and i think part of that is because people kind of saw the gameplay and the gameplay is not looking so hot like uh, her walking looks really choppy <laughs> like, it looks like they didn't animate enough frames, I can tell, but it looks, like, weird, like, just abnormal the way she walks, and the battle, some of the battle sequences, some of them look a little bit choppy, and some of them look, like, kind of smooth, actually, but overall, just a really interesting concept. Like, I can put aside its, like, faults with the gameplay, like, that choppiness, I can put aside that just for unique, ambitious concept like this. It looks gorgeous, by the way, too. And it's called Time and Eternity because it's got, like, time manipulation mechanics in there. It's by Bandai Namco, too, so... So, it's been... They didn't announce a date or anything. They just basically came out and said... One of the guys came out and said, yeah, it's coming to Western audiences, so... I know Bandai Namco's got their hands full on their Nino Kuni. They're going to localize Tales of Ilya, And now this, so... I love Bandai Namco. But that is it. That is my news, so... Clive... What do you yeah. got for us today? Well, there's going to be a brand new Mega Man game coming oh. out. Hell yes. But it's not Mega Man Legends 3. Capcom has announced Mega Man, or if it's known in Japan, Rockman Crossover, a social RPG for ISO uh, 4 and above. For A few details are available so far. The game promises to bring together all heroes and villains across all of the Mega Man uh, universes together. The story goes as followed. It is a world where all worlds of Rockman have crossed over. The gulf of time and space have been closed thanks to the efforts of Dr. Wily, Sigma, and other villains from Rockman and company. Dr. Light and Dr. Kosak work together in creating a brand new robot to oppose this crisis. The production model, this robot uses battle memory that has been scattered across the world and possesses infinite potential to transform and increase his power. The player battles evil as a new type of robot. Create your own Rockman and battle with others to protect time space and bring peace uh, to speak on the ISO's compatibility it will run on the iPhone 3G 4 and 4S and iPod touch models beyond generation 3 it is playable on the iPad but the game is not designed for the iPad's resolution meaning it's going to be all pixelated and stuff like that uh, the game it will release in Japan in autumn of this year, other details such as price and how the game will play is not yet released. So, I don't have an iPad, so I don't. I'm not getting this game. Makes me sad. Crickets. Dun, dun, dun. Well, what's a Mega Man again? <laughs> <laughs> it's a man of Mega. 
That's all you really need to know. I guess you could say that news article is pretty mega. Uh, <laughs> That's a very. That wasn't a very good pun. Exactly. God damn it. No, so, okay, so if you guys have, like, an iPad or an iPod Touch or something, I guess it's kind of cool, but, you know... I don't have an iPod or iPad, so... Well, this isn't I'm really, fucked. like... It's not really a game that I would think Mega Man fans kind of want. <laughs> you know, I think they would want Mega Man Legends 3 first. But... Well, yeah. But, yeah, so... New Mega Man game for the ISO, iPod, Touch, iPad. It's okay, I guess. But uh, my next news story is the new Super Mario Bros. 2 uh, is going to cost more digitally than it is retail. With the release of Super Mario, new Super Mario Bros. 2 coming to the 3DS on August 19th, which is like in three days, it will be the first D, uh, first. 3DS gate title that will be available for digital downloads, but reports in Europe say that it's going to cost more to download the game than as if you bought the retail copy. The retail copy is going to range of £34. Amazon and GameStation are going to be selling the game for about £29.99, but the digital download version of the game is going to cost £5, uh, £5 more than the retail uh, copy, which is going to be $39.99. There's no word that it's going to be the same in other regions, but it's most likely that it's going to be the same thing. I don't know, how do you guys feel about that, that it's going to cost more to download this game than as if you actually bought it? That's just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that's stupid. Like, like, I don't really plan on buying this game anyway, but like, I would prefer a physical copy of a game anyway. Uh, any game. It doesn't matter what the game is. But So, like, if it's cheaper, that, you know, that gives me a, another incentive to get the retail copy. Yeah, especially since the downloadable one's never going to be on sale. <laughs> it's always going to be that price. Yeah. That's, like, the main reason why people buy downloadable games so cheap. Just look at, like, the Apple Marketplace. Games are so cheap, so people buy them. But if it's too expensive... No one's going to buy that. That's why they don't sell them at, like, $50 as it is on the marketplace. So. Yeah. I don't expect a lot of people to download that. And I heard, too, that there was someone who tested that out, downloading New Super Mario Bros. 2, and they said it took them about seven hours to download the game <laughs> from the shop. For what? Yeah, like, because it's obviously a full game, and it's a big game, so... Uh, they just sat there with the 3DS, you know, kind of tested it to see how long it takes, and it was like seven hours. Dude, if it took seven hours, so it's like it's seven under that. under seven hours, I could like in an hour, I can go to GameStop, buy it, and be back playing it. <laughs> right? Yeah, it, it that makes no sense. I guess the only benefit, like they could do this, where like you could pay more for the game and get it like two weeks early, that would be worth it, maybe, maybe. But even then, that'd be ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It's going to work. But, I don't know. I'd rather just wait, <laughs> and I'll get it cheaper. What would happen if, you like, your internet went out as you're downloading it? <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> well, I, I would think, you know, they keep a record of what you purchased. Yeah, yeah. I think it's got, actually, I think it's got a resumable download, so you can yeah. pause it, come back to it, and then keep downloading. Okay, that's good, then. Yeah, they need that. It's like, all, all I need is, like, you know, one more minute. Internet cuts out. <laughs> oh, you got that the whole thing. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> but uh, the last and final news story that I have is, you guys remember that Legend of Zelda art book that was released in Japan a while ago? That kind of, like, it was an art book, but then it told, like, the complete history of Hyrule. Yep. Sure. Well, uh, yes. Yes, that it's is. It's finally being localized, an English version and uh, Dark Horse Comics is releasing it. The book is supposedly going to come out January of 2003 for thirty four ninety nine, And actually it has an exact date right here. It's January 29th, 2003. So if you guys have been waiting like a long time to get an English copy of this book, it's coming out. You know, I know the Japanese version of this book is going for about 50 to 60 
possibly seventy dollars on eBay. So hey. this, you know, so you can get an English copy for thirty-four bucks. If you guys, if our Zelda fans, like I already have the Japanese copy, but I want to get the English copy just so I can read the book. And it's a beautiful book too. Yeah, looks gorgeous. Definitely a must own for Zelda fans. That's pretty much all the new stories I have, you guys. Awesome. That's fantastic. No. <laughs> oh. God damn it. I know. He says it he says it all the time. Yeah. Well that's well. I guess that wraps up news. Ha! There it is. Do you do you guys happen to know the time, maybe? Oh god. Look, you know the time. It's no, it's eight thirty. It's, 30. it's it's my no, bedtime. It's ten thirty, and eight thirty. I I think it's question time, maybe. No. Uh, <laughs> actually, I was thinking the quick trivia, but yeah, let's do questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about questions. I'm like, I was trying to think the whole time. I like, I feel like we're not missing something. What are we missing? I'm like, oh yeah, questions. You guys want to do questions? Let's do questions, and then we'll get into quick trivia. <laughs> It's a uh, question time! Well, our first question comes from Renegade Muffin, and he asks, Who do you guys think would win in a fight? Sonic? Or Mario? That's tough. I mean, it's a lot of stuff to factor in, like, because Mario yeah. could go down a pipe and just hide from Sonic the whole time. <laughs> and, then, and then if Mario jumps on Sonic, man, it's over. But then he has to catch Sonic first. It's tricky. It's tricky. And I'm gonna go with um, Super Sonic. I'm gonna go with Sonic. I'm gonna go with Sonic because Sonic, like Techno just said, he has super the supersonic chaos emeralds and stuff. And like Mario, he, he has all those power ups. Yeah, but like Mario has to be fast enough to use those power ups to catch Sonic. You know, like mm. like how good is a fire flower gonna do against what if Sonic? <laughs> what if he's just standing still? And then he activates the superstar, <laughs> like right when Sonic comes right yeah, out. Yeah, but you gotta remember, they they both like are both of those power ups are time based power ups. So you gotta you gotta put in how many rings? You gotta have at least fifty rings for uh, Sonic to go supersonic, and then. I I don't know how long that whole uh, superstar or whatever it's called for Mario. It's, like, it's like a matter yeah. of seconds. Yeah, it's like, well, I don't know. Mario's got them hops. Like he'd have to catch Mario. And Sonic can't jump as high. I I think Mario because he has uh, the Mega Mushroom, the Tiny Mushroom. He has all these different power. Yeah, I pick Mario just cool. because because of his power ups alone. Like he yeah, can but he use has the to cape. catch Sonic though. He does have to catch Sonic. Yeah, he does. Sonic can just run away from him and then do the spin dash on him. But Sonic well, would be wanting to get Mario, so he'd be, they'd Mario be coming at each other. Two. Oh, oh my god. god. We're Give fighting about fucking two made-up characters. No, but Sonic could do the spin dash and hit Mario, indicating that... So if Mario has used the Mega Mushroom, he's like 20 feet tall. Sonic could just do the spin dash on him, just like he does on many Robotnik robots, and just shrink him down to size. Because as soon as Mario gets hit, he turns back into like his previous forms. But that's assuming he's not jumping, though. What if he has... He could just Tanuki be big and jump on him. Tanuki suit? What if he's Super <laughs> Saiyan? <laughs> Oh my god. What if, what if Sonic is in a mech? Like, there's so much to factor in. Shut up. What if it's Just Metal shut Sonic? Up. Next if, question. Next question. You know, no, see, now you're not even being realistic. What if the... What if... <laughs> realistic! None of this is realistic. <laughs> uh, Mario has the coin blocks from the new game, gets a bunch of coins, spends them on a nuke, and then that's how he's going to win. He's going to nuke. No... Hey, there's possibilities. You're being unrealistic. You're all being God, unrealistic. But we're, but yeah, we're all being unrealistic. <laughs> Alright, next question then. And this is from NeoJake9999. 
And he asked, if you, if you guys are feeling down or having a crappy day, what game would you play to cheer yourself up and take your mind off things? If you can't think of one in particular, what genre of game would you play? Mm, well, I know one of my go-tos. Super Mario World. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that is my go-to because it's an amazing game. It's cheery, upbeat, the music's incredible, the level design is phenomenal. Enemy design, phenomenal. It's a big game. It's not like you can beat it in a couple hours. Just all around great game. And to take my mind off stuff, usually RPGs. Cause mm -hmm. just, it's easy to play, kick back and play an RPG. Uh, I'm going to go with any of the Spider-Man games. Because you can just spend hours swinging around the city. You know, You don't have to think about the game. You don't have to do much. You just swing around the city, and then you know you can stop petty crimes if you feel like it. So I'm gonna have to go with any of the newer Sonic games, uh, S Spider Man games. Techno, Mikey. I'd like to say sandbox games because, like, a lot of times I just drive around in like GTA or when it's like raining out, and that's pretty fun to do. Mm -hmm. But lately, what I've been doing is playing Mortal Kombat. And it's just fun beating the shit out of stuff when you're pissed. Finish him. Exactly. Yeah. What's your techno? Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Sonic <sighs> Knuckles. Sonic Super Shuffle for the Dreamcast. <laughs> Super Shuffle? It's Sonic Shuffle, <laughs> I know. not Sonic... But you gotta admit, Sonic Super so Shuffle sounds better. <laughs> that, that'd be the sequel. Um, that'd be the sequel. <laughs> GTA sounds pretty good. Um... Just killing hookers and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so or, yeah, you know, a killing a hooker and take my money. Let's try you take my money back. Um, or, a, you know, beat em ups like yeah. Streets of Rage or. Alright, next question is from Jason Hayes. And he says, out of all the podcast hosts, who would win in a gaming tournament out of driving games, fighting games, and first-person shooters? It's kind of a hard question. <laughs> I put yeah. my money on Cliva for fighting, and I think Techno plays a lot of FPSs. I actually play a lot of racing games, so I put my money on myself for the racing games. Like Mario Kart 7? Mm, yeah, take that. <laughs> shy Guy, own it. Shy Guy, yeah. top tier. Shit. Top tier Shy Guy. I'm going to have to go with your answers as well. I have no idea. I'll just go with yours. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I think that works out pretty good. Like, that fits, like, all of us. Alright, next one's from Mikey's Monarch. Who's that guy? What a, what, what a dude. What a bastard. I don't know. What a... What a I thought we were supposed to block that guy, but, uh... <laughs> yeah. I gotta, screen these, I gotta screen these questions more often. Screen Okay, he <laughs> asks, If you could travel back into the past... To when you were a kid, what game would you take back to your past self to show? Mm. Mine's easy, actually. I would bring back two games. I'll bring them Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition and Final Fantasy 13 or 13 2 because uh, when I was a kid, I used to play on the Super Nintendo Final Fantasy 3 and Street Fighter 2 all the time. Oh, so I would show him the those two games. Obviously, be like, "Hey, little Dan, this tells of Asperia." Hey, and little. Then I'd, I'd be like, "What the what the hell's the Xbox 360? I don't know what that is. What's the CD <laughs> for? Where do I put the CD?" In? <laughs> but I'd be little like, "Dan's just it's sitting amazing. there. Little Dan's just sitting there with his miniature beanie on his head." It's like, trust me, when you're older, you play it. It's amazing. You'll thank you'll thank me, which is myself. So you'll thank me <laughs> for it. You'll, you'll thank me. Yeah, that and... Oh. Yeah, that. God. I would bring... Sonic 06. No. It's Sonic no. 06. No. Oh, I would no. take that game. God. Take... No. Take it away. A little techno. Uh, the Sonic 06 hey. is amazing. A little techno. <laughs> oh, God. You take... That's 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 take take Sonic 2 back to when Sonic 2 came out. <laughs> Okay. Oh my! I would take a PSP and ease books one and two. Oh my be the God. coolest kid in town. I'll be the be coolest like, what the motherfucker hell is that? there. Yeah, and I'll be like, "What the hell is this? I don't have a Turbo Graphics. 
<laughs> I never, I never had one, and like I said last episode, thank you, Johnny, for bringing me into the ease, or you know, the land of ease. The land of ease. The land of wise. The land of wise. Wise. It's a very wise land. Shit. That's a very wise decision. <laughs> that's, oh, there, that's a good... It's a very wise choice there. <laughs> God damn it, shut up. <laughs> this is a pretty wise episode. What about you, Mikey? You have to answer your own question. Oh, oh, I got it. Take Ocarina of Time, a 3DS remake, and take it back to when Ocarina came out on uh, at 64. <laughs> <laughs> making, making little kids' eyes bleed. <laughs> back in the past. Alright, see, next question is from Hero of Slime. And he has, this oh, is my question yeah. for the podcast. If you do, do you guys think an open world 3D Mario game could work? I'm talking the size of Skyrim. No oh, hell yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah, I think it'll be awesome if the because the way I see it, it'll be just like Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time. You know, instead of the temples, you get like eight different castles that you got to rescue the princess in before you can actually take down Bowser. Yeah, but then you have to like traverse the map from castle to castle area, and there's like those little puzzle areas and platforming areas in between, and there's like cities you can explore, buy items and stuff. Man, That's that'd be fine. amazing. You can How use the, the giant mushroom. Mechanic? How would the fighting mechanics work? That's the just thing. do it. Just just, just do it like Mario sixty four. Yeah. yeah, it's just the, like three D, but you just jump on them like that. Totally can work. Be amazing. Just play it. Just play dragons on there and Fushiro Dao them. <laughs> Fushiro Dao mechanic for Mario. What about you, Techno? What do you think? Um, sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, He's very wise. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, what you guys said, it, it I'd play it. it yeah. It'd be pretty badass. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Next question is from Rusty Lewis, and he asks, "Have you guys heard of pa Papo and Yo? Yes. And do you plan on yeah. to get it? Playing it now, and it is a must buy this year. Trust me." Mm. I have I no know. idea what this game is, so I'm, I have no idea plan to get it. It's a downloadable oh, that was a song. It's a downloadable game for the PS3. It just came out this past week. It's, I think, $12 for PSN Plus members. You play as this kid who has, like, this monster friend who helps him solve environmental puzzles. It's really weird. You have to, like, look up footage. He, he does, like, drawing on the world and changes things, and he manipulates and forms the world to, like, solve puzzles. It's really bizarre. I, I was actually really interested in it. I was kind of tempting myself to buy it. But then I watched a review, and I shouldn't trust IGN, but still, IGN, what they showed concerned me because they showed some game-ending bugs and glitches. Like, they gave it, like, a 4.5 out of 10, but they said it's, like, really rushed. So, like, it's really sloppy. It's got a lot of technical issues. That, like, I guess there's a point where his character fell through the same spot, like, four times in a row, and then, like, he caused, the game froze up on him multiple times. There's a game-ending thing where he had to redo the entire game, and it's like, I'm kind of worried about that. But it's an interesting concept. It's very interesting. But I've been more obsessed with a game called Sound Shapes. That's a PSN exclusive. That's amazing. Talk about that later. Yeah, I'm interested. These guys uh, don't know, but I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> that Papu and Yo. Yeah, it's really bizarre. If you, if you'd have to look it up, watch video footage, and you kind of understand. It's a environmental puzzle platformer kind of thing. Yeah, I heard it's got an interesting concept behind it, like an emotional concept, like because he plays this kind of like lower class kid who lives in, I think it's like Brazil or somewhere just from the slums and all that. I heard it's got a really nice kind of metaphor going for it. I hear thunder coming from someone's thing. That thunder. It's not so near. me. Techno's in the storm, man. Give us a live feed. Live weather report. 
<laughs> well, Walk outside. it's fucking raining like shit. Like shit it's and just that Breaking news. It's thundering like a bitch. <laughs> take, take your laptop out there and see what happens. I, I wish, don't have one. I wish more news shadows reported like you. It's thunder like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the guy from Family Guy, it's gonna rain. It's rain. <laughs> Y'all better get your umbrellas. <laughs> that Papa and you. <laughs> okay, let's see. Next question's from Mega Tenkota. He says, uh, when it's question time, ask Techno why doesn't he dress up as Amy for PAX? That's a good question. Yeah, Bullshit! No! Answer the man. I'm not doing it. You've asked me before the, this podcast started, and I just said fuck, and no, I'm not doing that. That's dumb. <laughs> Make a necklace with that Amy action figure. <laughs> Where? What about cream? Would you dress up as cream? Uh, no! No! <laughs> oh my god! Even better. <laughs> what about Rose the Bat? <laughs> Rose the Bat. <laughs> Be saucy. Uh, Alright. We don't want to. We don't want to scare little kids at PAX. So yeah. <laughs> Leave it at that. Alright, next question is from Return from Other Base, and he says, I have two options for you guys. Mm. You either take a slow, overweight bird to the... Oh my God. You take a slow, <laughs> overweight bird to the face, which can potentially lead to some sort of infection or disease, or an eight-hour marathon of Echo the Dolphin, oh which will potentially <laughs> cause your brain to melt, or at least cause some mild form of... Insanity. No, I'm going with two. The, no, take no the, I'm going with the bird to the face. I'm going with two. Going. Overweight bird to the face. <laughs> it's like, look at that fat bird flying right at me. Okay. Wait, I must ask, how come you're taking a bird to the face? Are you, like, playing Angry Birds live or something? No, this is a just joke you, from last week. I'm guessing you didn't. Listen to last week's <laughs> no, episode. No, I, I didn't. Okay. Then we, we had a return to mutter. Basically, we had a return to mutter base on. And what was it? We were asked, like, our powers, like, if we, unique powers, and we had to be yeah. original. And, and Alex said, I wish I had the ability to, like, summon small, like, these fat, overweight birds. Like, just a <laughs> bunch of them. And, and they just, like, swarm people and stuff like that and explode. Kamikaze overweight birds. That's basically yeah. a pretty badass power. <laughs> it's going to be in the next X-Men movie. Yeah, so that's what that joke's from. So, uh, yes, I'd rather take an overweight bird to the face and have to stare at Eco for eight hours. And couch my eyes up. <laughs> <laughs> and that is actually it. That was the last question. Those Ooh. are good questions. Yeah. Except for that Mikey question. Jeez, God. Yeah, I don't like that guy. A horrible question. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Now, do you guys know what time it is? Hmm? We just Question did questions. Time. No. Question. No, we just did questions. <laughs> it's more question time now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is that time for Nostalgic Dance Quick Trivia. So, if you remember Techno One last week, which last week was about the original Xbox, Woo! and he picked us Hardy Jaguar. Very no, much. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Because. Okay. No, he picked the Sega Genesis, and actually, I didn't plan this, but we talked about some of the questions actually before, so I hope you guys retain information well. From a couple hours, like an hour ago. <laughs> Techno doesn't need to. He can Google as fast as you can type. No Googling. That Google, I'm watching. Or, or, I'm not. I'm watching you mentally, like I'm there. He's the Googler. <laughs> and my eyes on you, somehow. He has, com he has cameras in your house all over the place. <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, I have ten questions. It is about the Sega Genesis, but there's actually some just Sega in just Sega in general questions about Sega. 
So right. I got. I hope you guys love the Genesis and Sega. Yeah. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for this shit. So what's going to be the buzzing word, guys? So you guys can choose. I want Keith Apicary. Sega. Sega. Just to make it Sega. Sega's the buzz on word. Sega. Sega. Yeah, Sega. Sega okay. time. Let's start this off. This is kind of just like a basic question, but still good. Question number one. What year was the Sega Genesis released in the States? Sega. Techno. 1989. Yay! You are correct. Dun, dun, dun. Google. The Google strikes early. <laughs> that oh Google. my god. I think him and Dan are working together. Dan's feeding them the answers. <laughs> Live feed. You can see my screen right now. Oh, shit. Question number two. Are you ready? Yes. Question Hell number yeah. two. We all know the Sega Genesis, had, Sega Genesis had many different add-ons and peripherals, but this Genesis add-on was only compatible with the Model 1 because of its design. Sega. Tecmo. Power base converter. Yay! Yep. See, as I said, I hope you guys retain information and talked about that before. I didn't plan that too, so... Okay. Oh, this one's a good one. I like this question. Question number three. Pay attention there. Okay. In, Nintendo, <laughs> in Nintendo's vastly underrated side-scrolling racer, Uniracers for the Super Nintendo, Nintendo took a jab at Sega. What would happen when you tried to enter the term Sega or Sonic for your unicycle name? Sega. Mikey. I think it'd say too slow. No. That, that's something else, though. What about uh, you guys? What would happen if you typed in Sega or Sonic for your unicycle name in Uniracers? Sega. Sega. Fiverr. Um, I'm just going to take a guess and make some sort of, like, Sega sound effect or something. No. Sega. Technically. It, it just didn't let you use it? No. Okay. You're all wrong. It would say, <laughs> when you entered it, it would say, not cool enough. <laughs> that name wasn't cool enough, basically. It wouldn't let you use it, too, but I was looking for not cool enough, because it actually says that when you're trying to enter it. But Mikey was referring to what would happen when you typed in Hedgehog. And if you type in Hedgehog, that activates a super slow mode of the game. So this taking a jab at Sonic and all that. So that's the Hedgehog mode, which is like a super slow mode for Uniracers. There okay. you go. This one's an interesting question, too. Kind of long, too, so let me get all the way through it. So question number four. In the 1990s, congressional hearings on offensive video game material... There are four primary games that were deemed controversial for mature oh, content. Shit. This hearing would soon establish what we still know as the ESRB rating system. Those four controversial games were Mortal Kombat, Lethal Enforcers, Doom, and this very infamous Sega CD game that was ported later ported to 32X, 3DO, and PC. What is that game? Sega. Techno. Night Trap. Yay! You are correct. Good old Night Trap. What an utter piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we have that to thank for the ESRB rating. So we're on to question five. And this one was kind of mentioned before. This one might be a quick draw, too. So just telling you guys, be ready. Now, going by true specs of both the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis, the SNES outperformed the Genesis on almost every factor except this. Sega. Sega. Oh, I heard my ah. first. Sound. No. Sega. Oh, Clive. Uh, yeah. Speed. <laughs> Yay. Yes, speed. Processing speed. That's the only thing that the Genesis had going for it. It was a faster system, but other than that, the other specs are all in favor of the Super Nintendo. So, yeah. So, we are halfway through. Clive has one point. Techno has three. Mikey has none. Heck yeah. Mikey, bring it <laughs> up the rear. Yeah. <laughs> On to question six. This one's interesting to you. What was the original name of the Sega company before it was Sega? Sega. Techno. Oh, my God. 
Yeah, ten seconds he catches. <laughs> Damn he's doing this buzzing he's in. Googling. No. <laughs> One, two, three, four, six. six. <laughs> it's like service, service, electronic gaming association. I don't know. <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah. Clive and Mikey? Any guesses? I have no I have no idea. Mikey nothing. Nothing. It is called Service a... Games. No. Oh my god. No. Were you Googling? No. Yeah, he was Googling. <laughs> <laughs> it was called Rosin Enterprises. It was named oh. after David Rosin, the founder of Sega. <laughs> On the question seven. Okay. This one's a good one too. It's a long question, so bear with me. The Super Nintendo was stacked with memorable RPGs from the Final Fantasies, Chrono Trigger, Secret of Mana, Earthbound, and Mario RPG, to the lesser known RPGs like Robotrack, Illusion of Gaia, Soul Blazer, Evo, the Lufias, and Breath of Fires. However, the Genesis established this highly acclaimed turn-based RPG series. What is it? Sega. Techno. Fantasy Star. Yay! You are correct. Good old Fantasy Star. Good job. <laughs> Woohoo! So we are on the question eight, and this one was kind of mentioned before too, so be ready. Okay. The Sega Channel was a project developed by Sega for the Genesis starting in December 1994. The Sega Channel service was provided to the public by Time Warner Cable, and for a monthly subscription fee, it allowed people unlimited access to many games. Over its course, there were 12 Sega Channel exclusive games released. Name one of them. Sega. Sega. Fiber. Mega Man Wily Wiley was. Yay! You are correct. That is one of them. Bingo. And Golden Axe 3. Yay! You are correct, but there's no bonus points. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> and, uh... Keep going. No, 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 no. See, there see was... Earthworm? Is Earthworm Gem on it? No. Nope. No. Oh. Um, um, God damn it. What was that one... It was like a little robot dude. Yeah, I love that. I want that game. I want a reproduction of it. Mm. It's one of the most beautiful Genesis games. It's called Pulse Man. Pulse Man, uh, yeah! Pulse Man. Other games included Alien Soldier, Mega Man The Wily Wars, Golden Axe 3, Donald Duck and Maui Mallard, Mr. Nuts, which you play as a squirrel, <laughs> which is interesting, <laughs> International Rugby, Body Count, Hurricanes, Bloodshot, Slash Battle Frenzy, Power Drive, and Nightmare Circus. So there you go. Good old Sega Channel. So Cliven now has two points. Moving on to question nine. There would have been no Sega Genesis if it wasn't for this console, which was Sega's first home video game yeah. console. Cliven. The Mega Drive. Uh, Master System. <laughs> oh! No. no. <laughs> Not it. Alright. Oh my god. Um. Techno, Mikey. God damn it. Oh my god. Like Siri, get Master System, but there was something before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Um, I forgot the name of it. Uh, <laughs> Sega. Um, Tech. the Sega One Thousand. Mm. I don't know. Yay! I'll give you it because it was this SG One Thousand. S, okay. And SG stands for Sega Game. So it was a Sega Game 1000. Old school, taking it back. So you now have five points. This one is based on me, so I hope you're ready. <laughs> oh, good. What is Dan's favorite Sega Genesis game? I, I will give you a list of games. Let me finish it. So here we go. Okay. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Dynamite <laughs> Heady, Biohazard Battle, Thunder Force 2, Ballast 3, Shining Force, Fantasy Star 4, and Shining in the Darkness. Sega. Mikey. Dynamite Heady? No. I don't. I do Sega. Like, I love Dynamite Heady. Techno. Um. Sh Shining Force 2. No. Oh, fuck. Can you, the, can you say the games again? <laughs> Sure. I, I I have like a choice of three of them, so. <laughs> yeah. I never said Shining Force 2, so we should oh. listen a little better. <laughs> oh my god. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Dynamite Heady, which Mikey already said, 
Biohazard Battle, Thunder Force 2, Valus 3, Shining Force, Fantasy Star 4, and Shining in the Darkness. Those are your choices. Okay, um... I've mentioned one, it before. Can you say it one more time? Just one more time. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Dynamite Heady, Biohazard Battle, Thunder Force 2, Valus 3, Shining Force. Okay, it's either Valus 3, Sonic 2, or the other two ones. Shit, the Thunder 2. Shit, uh... I'm going with that Thunder 2. Thunder Force 2? One of my favorite shmups on Genesis, but not quite. The answer I was looking for was the original Shining Force. Damn the it. very first one. <laughs> Check That's out bullshit. Shining Force 2. I'm gonna Google God. this shit. <laughs> what is Dad's favorite Genesis? Yeah. <laughs> it's a fact. I was trying to remember all the games you fucking mentioned. Yeah. Okay. So... We've already come to the bonus question. Clive can still tie since it's, he has two points. Techno is five, but let's just say this might be a quick draw. I hope you guys are ready. Mikey has none. I need this. To get Prepare on yourself. Board. This is going to be quick. What does Sega stand for? Sega. Techno. Yeah. Service games. Yay! You are correct. Oh yeah, motherfucker! SE for service <laughs> and GA for games. Yeah. And I have a little history lesson here for you. David Rosen, the founder mentioned before, was an American officer in the Air Force. He launched a two-minute photo booth business in Tokyo. This company eventually became Rosen Enterprises, which I mentioned before. And in 1957, he began importing coin-operated games to Japan. By 1965, Rosin Enterprises grew to a chain of over 200 arcades, with Service Games being its only competitor. Rosin then orchestrated a merger between Rosin and Service Games, and they just combined all their facilities, and he became the new chief executive of Sega Enterprises, which derives from the term Service Games, from the first two letters of each. So there you go, history lesson. Techno wins. You rock! Woohoo! He wants a sorry Jaguar. No. <laughs> Good job, Techno. Now, as part of your prize, you win a cream costume. An Amy God. doll. Oh. No. Another one. You win Echo the Dolphin signed by the creator. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? If you don't answer within five seconds, I'm answering. <laughs> what? You better start answering. Answering what? Well, what's the Five, topic? Oh, four, for next week? Three, um, two, I'm going to say... Atari Jaguar. Done. No, <laughs> god damn it. The Sega Saturn. Sega! There you go, Sega Saturn. Clive can take it back. I will let you have your series back. <laughs> Good uh, you, want me to, you want me to do the questions? Yeah. I'm going to be busy this next week. Right. Sega Saturn. i got to study up on the Sega Saturn. So I guess that leads us to our next topic. What the hell have we been playing recently? <laughs> oh, I thought we let Mikey I... go first. Yes, Mikey. What the hell have you been playing recently? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll try to answer this really fast. Monster Joker Two, mm. pretty fun game. I tried MGS like five minutes before the podcast, but the PS One disc isn't working. MGS4, because of the trophies. Mortal Kombat 9. Final Fantasy 13. Bioshock 2. Oh, Demon. yeah. Uh, Modern Warfare 3. Call of Duty Black Ops. And... Let's see, I played Super Mario 3D Land. Just a little bit of that. And I think that's it. So there you go. Very nice. I didn't want to take all episode <laughs> <laughs> Well, I would gladly take all episode now. <laughs> oh, no. So, I guess I'll go. Been playing quite a bit. Yeah. So, of course, a little bit more Persona 4 Arena. Just casually fighting on there. 
Oh, and I cleared a couple more stories. I'm, I've cleared 50% of the stories in that game, so some interesting stuff. I highly recommend Labyrinth's the story, because it's a new character, and it's a very good story. Elizabeth's story, if you're a fan of Persona 3, you have to play that story all the way through. And just, yeah, really interesting game, very enjoyable. And I've been playing a new RPG for the PS3, which I was excited to win, because it's... I would say it's actually one of the rarest PS3 games, just like a regular copy of it. And that's Artinoka Quoga Nell of Arcel. This is a... Wait, what? <laughs> it's a mouthful, it's by Nisa. It's the third installment in the Artinoka series by Nisa. Artinoka 1 and 2 came out on the PS2. I have Artinoka 2. And it's a JRPG series that revolves around these kind of goddesses called Revitels and... Basically, it's really unique because, like, in the fighting, you actually have to protect the Revitels because they cast, they cast magic by singing songs and hymns. It's really heavy based on music, but they're also known heavy for sexual innuendos. They drop sexual innuendos like there's no tomorrow, especially this one because it's M M M rated and for mature, so yeah, there's a lot of intense stuff in there. Now, I'm not even bullshitting. There's a mechanic where to the stronger magic you want the girls to use, the more clothes come off of them. It's like really bizarre. It looks yeah. like it's my kind of game. Yeah. <laughs> it's called purging, and that's like you purge more clothes in order to have them use more stronger magic. Really weird. <laughs> but it's a fun game. It's actually, I'm enjoying it a lot more than Artanoka too. It's got a different battle system. The ones before were kind of like a turn-based battle system, whereas... This is kind of like a real-time action-based battle system, like a, a Tales of, you know, a Tales of game or like a Star Ocean game. Not up to the same quality, but it's, you know, you just mash buttons, do combos, you have some strong moves mapped to like some of the arrows. But an interesting mechanic with the Revitels and having to protect them. And there's an interesting mechanic too where it shows like the frequencies of the song or the song that they're singing and if you hit the enemy at high frequencies, it does more damage, so it's really interesting. A beautiful game, too. Interesting style. I actually got the premium edition for that, which is even rarer, so I got it for steel, which I was happy about. What what comes in the premium edition? Artanelco Visual Book and the Soundtrack CD. I actually did an unboxing of it that I'm going to put up eventually. Yeah. But it's a gorgeous set. I got it for like $37, and the game is one of the rarest PS3 games to the point where the cheapest you can get a copy is between 50 and 70 just for the game alone and there's not a lot of premium editions out there some of the cheapest sell for around 80 to 100 dollars so yeah I made out with you steel. Got steel it is in mint condition people are just I guess sleeping on it I saw that and snagged it so, but yeah I've been playing a lot of PSN like downloadable games because I got my new PS Plus and I purchase a game I really wanted called Sound Shapes. Now, at first, I wasn't going to purchase it because for the longest time, I thought Sound Shapes was only a PS Vita exclusive, but I was watching a video and they're like, oh, you can get this now for PS3 and PS Vita. I'm like, wait, it's for both? So I could jump on and bought it right away. It didn't help, too, that it was available for PlayStation Plus discount, so I was like, yep, no brainer. It's really cool, too, because I don't see them do this a lot, but when you buy Sound Shapes, you buy the PS3 version and the PS Vita version. You own them both. <laughs> so uh, that's really cool to see that. So, like, you own a PS3 copy to play on your PS3, and you have a Vita copy to throw on your Vita. So I wish oh. you would do that more often. But Sound Shapes is right up my alley. It's an artsy game based around... It's a platformer based around music, and it's really heavy based around the community, so... Think Little Big Planet, like crafting levels. You can make your own levels. You can really detailed make your own beats. You can change like the transpose, the audio frequencies. Like you can really get in depth with it. It's just an awesome game to play. It's got a unique art style. It's been the. It's kind of got a similar art style if you ever played Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery, and it's actually got a Super Brothers level in it, inspired by Sword and Sorcery. It's got incredible music. Like I think it's got some licensed stuff too. Like. Dead Mouse has an album in there which you got to play through, and Beck has an album which is really interesting. But then you have the whole community where it's like you can follow people, you can like levels and all that, and it's just community driven. So it's really awesome. I've been making levels, playing through that. It's a fun platformer too because you control this little ball that's like a gooey ball, but 
There's a mechanic where he can stick to white surfaces, so like even if he's upside down, he'll stay attached to it. But you can press square to make him turn black, and when he's black, he won't stick, but he'll move faster, he'll roll like really fast. So very interesting mechanics there. It gets really challenging too later on. And there's like little modes in there like Beat School, which kind of teaches newcomers like, you know, some basics like chorus lining and how to make beats and all that. And there's like a death run mode which has like each level with these really insane challenges. So very fun. I mean, it takes even the most basic person, like even if you seem overwhelmed by it, like, oh, I can't really make any good music or nothing. No, I guarantee you, you can with this game. It really takes any of the basic person who probably doesn't know jack about music and turns them into a masterful sound composer. It's really something cool to behold. So I love sound shapes. I'm addicted to that. Highly recommend it. That's PSN. I, my, it might still be available for $12 for PSN Plus members. That's when I got it. And you get both PS3 and Vita version. So I've been playing a couple more downloadable games. Played a little bit of Renegade Ops, which is a twin stick kind of shooter. and I think it's got co-op with it. And it's really fun. It's just like a basic twin stick shooter. You blow up a lot of stuff. You go through these kind of actually big levels. They almost feel open world but they're kind of streamlined to get you from objective to objective. Usually ends with a boss fight at the end of each level, but a really actually surprisingly fun twin stick shooter. It's got leveling up mechanics where you can choose your power-ups and all that. Really fun. And I played another game called Outland, which was newly added for PSN Plus members. And it's an interesting, like, tribal, dare I say, dare I say, Metroidvania game. <laughs> It's a tribal Metroidvania game, and you kind of explore these, like, levels, and it has a really cool art style to it, like, it's, like, very dark, your character is, like, just solid black, and, like, the environment's black with, like, some color in the background, really beautiful game, but it's got some really nice, like, beat-em-up mechanics, where, like, fighting mechanics, it's, like, bosses for each world, you usually have to make multiple tracks through the road in order to solve some puzzles, and it's got this cool mechanic with, like, a spirit where you're, you're like, blue and red, and there's like these things that'll shoot bullets at you, almost like a bullet house shooter or something. But when you're blue, you won't get hurt by blue bullets. When you're red, you won't get hurt by red bullets. Almost like if you ever play Ikaruga, where you can switch between to like not take damage for certain color bullets. That's very, what I was just thinking, yeah. Yeah, very interesting game. And that's for free right now for PS Plus members, so definitely check that out. If you like Metroidvania games, worth checking out. And something I really wanted to play... They had the Walking Dead games on the episodes 1 and 2 for PSN Plus members, and I actually, this past week, played through episode 1 all the way, and I actually really enjoy it. It's very intense, so you have some very intense choices to make, but really cool. It's just like a really well-executed point-and-click adventure. It's just really cool to see how Telltale does these kind of games now. There's, there's a lot of times where like you have, it almost feels like you have complete control of the character, and it's just interesting puzzle solving it's, might require you to think a lot and just some really powerful choices to make especially in episode one and it's cool too because after you beat the episode it'll break down your choices that you made and it'll show the percentage of like you know choosing this option between this option it'll break it down like 50 percent chose you know to let this person die or something and so and so so really cool i definitely want to play through episode two as well I played a little bit more Lost Odyssey, get, trying to get back into that. I'm so close to finishing that. I'm on disc 4 now, so I'm hoping to finish that up soon. A little bit of Prinny 2, Dawn of Operation Panties, dude. <laughs> and Prinny is known as basically NIS America's mascot. It's a little penguin character who originates from Disgaea. And this is basically like an action side-scrolling platformer. And it's really quirky, really charming. I mean, the the concept is they stole, like, like the Disguise fans know Etna. She's, like, this red-haired chick. They stole her panties, and you have to get them back. <laughs> so that's, like, the whole premise of the game. Okay. But you're Sounds penguins. Sounds like Techno's type of game. <laughs> exactly. But you're penguins, and the catch is, prinnies are very weak. So, like, it's insanely hard. <laughs> like, it's a shockingly hard game. I died, like, 70 times in this one level. So, and how hard it is? You have a thousand lives, so that's how hard it is. They give you like a thousand printies to use because they're so fragile, but it gets aggravating sometimes. Just say, let's just say that. The controls aren't perfect. Uh, what really irritates me the most is the fact that when you double jump twice, 
you can't steer. Like, any common sense platformer, like even Mario from all the way to the 8-bit era, once you jump in the air, you can still kind of steer the direction you want to move. In this, you can. Like, so if I jump twice, I'm just going to fall down. So I've died so many times like that. But it's still kind of fun, even though it's extremely aggravating and can be very challenging at times. Played a little bit of Bitrip Beat, which is part of the Bitrip series. And this one is Picture Pong to like a rhythm game. So you have like a paddle and you have to hit these balls back that are going like it. But they go in really specific patterns to the music. Just a really awesome game to play. I'm really enjoying that. I picked it up off the new Humble Bundle. Shout out to that. It's the new Humble Android Bundle 3, but you can get them for Steam as well. So I picked that up mainly for Bitrip Beat. And one last game, little quirky Game Boy game. I didn't even know they had this on the Game Boy, but Two Rock, Battle of the Bionosaurs. <laughs> I didn't even know Two Rock was on the Game Boy, but it's really interesting, kind of fun, like, platformer, you know, action-based. You have, like, a knife, you can have a bow and arrow, a gun, go around killing dudes and shooting dinosaurs in the face. Pretty fun. <laughs> Good little game on the Game Boy, but that is it. Done. Nice. Dun, dun, dun. <sighs> Uh, let's see, I'll go next. Uh, the first one I've been playing is uh, Captain America the Super Soldier for the Xbox 360. And uh, this was actually a pretty good game. Like, If you guys heard, like a lot of people kind of compare this with uh, like Batman Arkham Asylum or Arkham City. Well, it is. It's just like that, but it's a little like dumbed down, like, especially in the combat. It's a little bit easier to do the moves. You don't have to be like precise you know, when you're countering different punches from thugs and stuff. But yeah, it, the whole game is just like Batman Arkham City, or, you know, except you can't glide like Batman can. But it's a good game. I, I really enjoyed it. You know, if you also... Bet another game to compare it to is just like Wolverine's... Uh, Revenge for the 360 as well. But yeah, you just go around. Basically, it takes place during the movie. So if you want, if you want to find out like more about Captain America's missions, um, you know, during the movie, like this is this is the game that you want to play. It's it's a little far fetched. Though. There's a little things that would not make it into the movie that you know just seemed a little strange, a little out of place. But it's a it's a good game. It's, I love it. And Captain America's main weapon is the shield, and this shield it works so well. Basically, what you do is you tight, you double tap like the R B button, and obviously he'll throw the shield, but it'll like it'll ricochet off like four or five guys, depending if you upgrade it uh, that well. And then if you fight like certain guys who can like repel your shield, I don't know if they have like telekinesis or magnetic powers or something, but they actually can like deflect your shield and it gets like stuck in like a beam or a wall or something. You have to like retrieve it, so it's it kind of adds some realism to the how Captain America fights with the shield, you know. So like I really enjoyed it and I really recommend if you guys have like if you like Arkham City or Arkham Asylum, definitely pick out Captain America. It's not a long game. It's like, I beat it in two sittings and took me about maybe six and a half to seven hours. So it's a, it's a great game though. I absolutely love it. Uh, and then the next game I've been playing is going with the whole superhero thing. I've been playing uh, Green Lantern Rise of the Manhunters for the Xbox 360. And then this game, if you, <laughs> this game plays just like God of War and Star Fox 64. And what what I mean by that is like it it there's two different styles of levels. So the first level, like I said, is God of War, which is basically you know your Green Lantern, it's your button masher. You know, you hit the X button to do fast uh, attacks, hit the Y button to do strong attacks. But then as you progress through the game, you get more experience, and you use that experience to buy more constructs for your Green Lantern ring power. Constructs are like the things you can imagine with your ring, like a giant fist or a baseball bat or a rocket ship or, you know, a Gatling gun. So the more experience you get, the more uh, constructs you can buy and the more weapons you have to progress through the game. So, like I said, it is a button masher, but, you you know, you're not just punching people, but you're also shooting guns and everything like that. Um, and the other type of level that I already said is just like Star Fox 64, Basically, you control uh, Green Lantern at, in the perspective that you're looking at his feet, and you can move Green Lantern around the screen, 
and you shoot, you know, incoming ships or robots or, uh, you know, mines that are in space, you know, just like Star Fox 64. And then, obviously, at the end of the level, you fight this huge, massive boss that, um, you know, where you have to destroy certain weak points, to d destroy the robot, alien, whatever you're fighting in that particular level. But um, it's really good. I don't know if Ryan Reynolds did the voice acting for Green Lantern, but the, the Green Lantern character model um, does look like Ryan Reynolds a lot. And it, it's really cool. The, the whole game kind of takes place... I think after the movie. So if you've seen the movie, you can go right into the game and just get the story. So, But it's a good game. It's another game I recommend as well. Um, again, it's not really a long game. I beat it in about maybe seven to eight hours in like maybe five different sittings. But it's a good game. I enjoyed it quite a bit. And hold on, I forget. I got to pull up my list and forget the rest of them. Okay, and uh, let's see, the next game I've been playing is, you guys, you guys have been noticed, like, the last couple months to almost a year, I've been mentioning Halo Anniversary for the Xbox 360. Well, yesterday, me and my friend on Legendary finally beat this game. Yahoo! Congrats. Oh, yeah. Thank you, man. Dun, dun, Thank, dun. You. Thank you, man. No, but yeah, we we <laughs> but yeah, we finally beat the game. You know, not too much to say about the game. It's Halo. You know, you played it on the original Xbox. But yeah, we finally beat it on Legendary. It was a huge accomplishment because you know it almost took us like what? How many months to actually beat this game? Just due to like real life stuff. So like that was kind of cool. And then the last and final game, which I haven't put too much time into, which I want to do a lot tomorrow and especially over the weekend is Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Now, um, I want to play this game and Revelations before Assassin's Creed 3 came out. And mainly, I wanted to play a game that, like, I could kind of get, like, get involved, like, I get in-depth into the story, so I play, I pop this in, and, you know, it's just like typical Assassin's Creed games. You play as Ezio, and I don't want to give... Well, I'm not... Well, this is at the very beginning of the game, but at the beginning of the game, his, um... Uh, I forget what he called his manor, his mansion, his his house basically gets um, raided by these um, Templars, and basically, you know, you're left with nothing. You know, you start off, you start the game like very powerful. Your life is very long, but then you know, once your house gets attacked, you're you're bare back to minimum. You hardly have no weapons at all. Your life sucks. So basically, that's how you know you have to get all your weapons again. You have to get your your life meter back up to full again. So the so it's the whole game so far. I've only put about two hours into it, but the whole game right now seems like revenge. You know, you're you're after the people who destroyed your house and stuff like that. So the only thing I find kind of not very good about the game is the combat. And I've always felt this way about Assassin's Creed games. Is basically I'm finding myself just holding down the um, the R1 button, because I'm playing it on the uh, PlayStation 3, and basically I'm just waiting for, like, people to attack me, and then I counter them, and then, you know, you kill them with whatever weapon you're holding. I don't really like that, because it's, it seems kind of slow and kind of boring, but um, that just seems like the best way to fight people, per se, you know, especially in large groups. Obviously, if you're trying to sneak, you know, you could shoot people with th uh, throwing knives and stuff like that, but that's the only thing I really don't like about Assassin's Creed games is the combat system. I love sneaking around. I love climbing on things. I love jumping on different um, buildings and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I like the game so far, even though I've only put about two hours into it. And um, that's about it, really. So, what about you, Techno? Well, um, I've been going through, um, with a friend, uh, on Metal Gear Solid 4, because he's never played it, whoop, whoop. and, um, yeah, I, I've, I've never beaten the game, because <gasps> I've, like, I played it on normal when I first got it, because, you know, I was, I played, you know, all the rest, and I was like, Normal will be fine, whatever. And I get the vamp, and oh. it pisses me the fuck off. 
He's a little bitch, and I hate his guts. So we're uh, right now we're just doing it on easy because I haven't played a Metal Gear game in so damn long. And yeah, <laughs> it's funny. There's a easy way to beat him too, and you would never even think of it. I'm not gonna say what it is, but that part pissed me off too. <laughs> How do you beat them? <laughs> um, just, oh, just, yes, just do so, it because I, I still have that save file. So okay, I spent hours just shooting at him nonstop, and you know the syringe you get in the game. Yeah, that's you. You use that on him. That that was the whole point of it, though. Isn't that ridiculous, though? <laughs> you would have never even thought of it. I thought that they tell you to use that because oh. that's what, you know, you shoot at him and then he gets slow and then you pick up the syringe and you stick him with it. Yeah. How yeah. come you didn't beat him though? It's <laughs> because he kept, like, knocking it out of my like hand or something and I would get pissed off. I'm like, fuck this game. No. I'm not doing this shit. So, you gotta keep your distance on him, though, and then you go up after he's knocked back a little bit. I don't know. Sucks. It's yeah, sucks. it's annoying and hard. Yeah. Stupid. Um, been playing uh more Mortal Kombat two. We need to play non. Yes, we do. Maki. I, I suck at Mortal Kombat. This is like my second one at all. I suck at it. Did you go through all the story mode? Yeah. No. That was, dude, the last level was a bitch. Ah. Uh, you just gotta uh, know how to do it. You, you just have to jump over them and then uppercut and then jump over them again. Uppercut, jump. It's, yeah. That, that game actually has a pretty good story, believe it or not, for a fighting Yeah, game. it was like the first fighting game with an actual good story to it. What Only guy were you, just, what guy what were you was, just talking about? Sha Shao Kahn, Raiden versus Shao Kahn. Oh, that guy was... He literally took me three hours to beat that guy. Yeah, he was annoying as shit. <laughs> like... <laughs> I don't know, like, that game has a good story, but there's only one gripe I had with it in the story, and the fact that once you beat the first half of the story, you're like, oh, it's done, the game's done. And then you find out you have to beat the same person again, but with a different person, and you're like, oh, then this story's done. No, nope. you have to beat the game again. So you have to beat the game basically three times, all well, technically not, but like, I don't know. It's just something, a gripe that I have with the story. It just drags on a little too long. But it's Wait. still pretty good. Oh! Yep. I'm I'm confused on what you're... He's, he's saying basically you play through Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3, and he didn't like that. He he kind of wanted to play it. The story mode will be a little bit shorter. Yeah, because it's like you... No, no, no. It seems like just when you beat Shao Kahn the first time, you're like, oh, this is the end of the game. Nope, it's not. <laughs> yeah, that's the end of the Mortal Kombat 2 segment. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah whenever you're riding and beating them. Yeah. When, when you make it to riding, you know it's over. Yeah. And but, I love the the ending, though. That set it up so well for the sequel. Yep. <laughs> and, for... I don't know, it was just like a perfect ending. And the, the, the fighting the fighting uh, mechanics in the game is like perfect to me. Because it's not too hard, and it's not too easy either. Yeah. It's one of those things that's easy to pick up and play, but hard to master, you know? Yeah. And if you don't master it, the people online will kick your ass with yeah. exploits and little stupid things. But yeah. Um, I've also played uh, some uh, The Simpsons yeah. on my PS3. 
Um, trying to think. Um, which, which Simpsons? The you know the arcade. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Dynasty Warriors, uh, Gundam Three. Played a little bit of that, and um. Mostly be been uh, using the new or I it's probably not new new but I just found it um on the PS uh, the PS uh, network store and it's the YouTube uh, app and it's ten times better than just going through the um, internet browser because if you go through the internet browser to watch YouTube videos on the PS3, you can't change it to, like, HD. But with the YouTube, or the YouTube app, it's already in HD, so, yeah. Ooh, it, it, it kind of looks like, uh, an app you would use on the Xbox, how it looks. I, try, I tried that one for the Xbox. I didn't really care for it. Yeah. Now you can watch yourself in HD tech now. <laughs> oh, yeah. What are you talking about? He doesn't even yeah. make videos. Need to HD camera. What? Techno C. Techno's one of the ones who left, too. He retired from YouTube. No, I did not. Techno, you don't do videos. The last video you did, I don't even know what it was. Ten years it ago. Pickups. You need to review the yeah. Amy doll. Yeah, do more reviews. Yeah. I don't do reviews. <laughs> start doing them. Never. I'm, it's always a good time to start. Yeah, do top tens then. Yeah, do okay. top tens. Favorite controller. Or let's play. Let's play. Let's play, like, let's like, play yeah, do, Echo do, the do, Dolphin. Yeah. Slender. Do let's, do let's plays. Let's play Slender, yeah. Shit. And, um, my last thing here. <laughs> um... Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll do top tens. I like top tens. Like top and ten reasons why you love Amy. <laughs> no, top, fuck that. No. Top okay. ten reasons I'll, why you'll marry Cream. No. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. Yeah, that one's easy. The like the number one reason is because Amy left him. <laughs> oh. You're. It. I, I'm not. No, I'm <laughs> done with this fucking topic. No more. All right. So, I'm sorry. My last, my last uh, thing is I've been watching some shit on Netflix, some big bad Beetleborgs. Fuck Hell yes. Yeah. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. Broke it. Ooh. I really wish I could watch the Japanese version. Yeah. Oh, I think I'm, you can. Well, see, I've never found, uh, like, videos with, like, subtitles. Yeah, hold the, on. Uh, Japanese. You know, who cares about the subtitles? You could have Dan translate it for you. <laughs> yeah. He's fluent. Including in Japanese. This guy said okay. that one thing to that one guy. He said, come at me, bro. <laughs> 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 come at me, bro. <laughs> it's a technical translation. That is funny. Um, I also watched... Yu uh... Yu Hakusho. No. That's not on Netflix. Um, Blade Runner. Yes, I did actually. Blade I did Runner. watch that. It's an amazing m movie. Oh my Where the god! Hell have you been? I finally <laughs> watched it. Would you recommend it to me, Techno? Yes, I would. Yeah. Pick yes. it up on Blu-ray, like Ultimate Edition. Go run out and get it now. Comes with like ten discs. Damn. Well, it's not that long of a movie, though, so... Or, well, it's not, like, ten discs long. <laughs> oh, it no just thought. has multiple versions of this movie, because there's, like, Final Cut, which just, like, got released, whatever, and whatever. Theatrical release, and yeah. all that crap, and then you got your extras and special shit to watch and 
Woo. But um, there is an anime on Netflix that I watched. My friend told me yesterday I need to watch it because it was awesome. And that is called Desert Punk. I oh, heard that's of. a great one. It's funny as fuck. I love it. It it has everything that I, that I like. Girls with big boobs. Oh. Nice asses. Sounds right and, in my house. And, uh, you know, guns and hmm. explosive things. Explosions? Question. Yes. Yes, explosions! Question. Yes. Have you watched Gurren Login? Dude, I I have every episode. Oh, okay, okay. Because I was like, if you if you like that show, then you'll like Gurren Login. Yeah, I know. Yoko. <laughs> <laughs> Love how he points her out. What about High School of the Dead? Oh, I love it. I've seen that over... It's amazing. Over and One, over. He watches episode six all the time. <laughs> Dan puts the, the show on CP. <laughs> no, I, I enjoyed it. I'm looking for a season two. I, I've You're been looking cool. for that for being unedited. <laughs> Uncensored version. <laughs> Censored? <laughs> How long is Desert Punks? Is it a long anime? Um, it's like 20, I, 23, 24 episodes. Hmm. Here's another show techno. Samurai, I can't pronounce the name. Samurai, Samurai Shampoo. Shampoo. Yeah, mm-hmm. dude, that's another freaking amazing show. Yeah, I watched that back when it was on Adult Swim. What a great show. And then you got Cowboy Bebop. Hell yeah. And then you got Something. Are all these okay. the ones you watched? <laughs> no. Oh, he's okay. He's just listing stuff off. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I've seen Cowboy Bebop. I have old Cowboy Bebop. Then, uh, but it, in the past the week. Adventure. Well, oh no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, wow, you watched a lot of TV yeah. last week. <laughs> um. All right. You watch uh, the Adventure of Nostalgic Dan. That's, That's a good one. That's a hundred episode out of it. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for that show to get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Never about I heard him discovering that he's a man. I heard he got picked up for a season two of another hundred episodes. <laughs> hundred episodes. Yeah. There's explosions in it, guaranteed. Hey! Awesome. And you marry a lady named Amy. No, I don't care. That's why Techno has her now. Oh my god! I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. He's done, yay. He's done, yay. But yeah, if you like anime, watch Desert Punk. It's on Netflix. It's amazing. Yeah, watch it or be a punk. Or How about be a that? Punk. And Nostalgic Dan stars in it. So yeah. definitely give it a look. You know what's a good anime that just crossed my mind is Gun X Sword. Gun X Sword. Basically, it's this, it's this uh, kind of like this loner and he's he's trying to take down you know some sort of his rival his villain but then he meets up with this uh strange girl who's trying to just um uh he's she's trying to find the the killer of her brother i believe oh no she's trying to find her brother uh but anyway this loner guy he he operates this giant mech robot that he can call down from space with his sword and the his sword is kind of like it's it's flexible like a ribbon, like he could twirl it around like a ribbon, but then he could straighten it like you know a sword. It, it's uh, <laughs> it's just pretty badass anime. Like it sounds weird, and I'm not really describing. Sounds it Sounds like very a well. good concept, though. It's it's so good, and it's and there's other uh, characters in the anime who have giant robots as well. And there's even like a group of five people who kind of have like this Voltron Power Ranger mech. They like you know they have five different mechs, but then they com- combine into one giant one. And they're they're my favorite, obviously, because I grew up on Power Rangers. But it's such a great anime. Um, yeah. here's another good series. Uh, Welcome to the NHK. Maybe you watch that or hear of it. Never nope. heard of it. It's not really action based, but it's like more story, like story driven. It's about like. I don't know, it's about, like, social problems. It's really good, though. Like, really deep. So, it's short. I think it's, like, 24 episodes. Check it out. 
Is Came that, around seven. Is that on Netflix? Uh, I don't. I don't have Netflix, so I wouldn't no. know. Oh, the the Gun X Sword is on Netflix though. Mm. It's like that one's like twenty four episodes. Gun Gray, bitch. Oh yeah. That, that one's a good one too. Yeah. Yeah, I love. It. I I watched that one originally on um, G four, back when they used to play anime at um, at night. Anime Unleashed. That was the little block. Blue Exorcist isn't bad. And Fairy Tale. Hmm. I've been watching One Piece though a lot. Good one. Which yeah. version? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Funimation? Yeah. I, I put that show, I put off watching that show for such a long time because I saw the Four Kids one when it debuted and it made me want to cry. It was so bad. <laughs> but yeah, the four kids version is garbage. Well, I think the only thing four kids has done well was turtles and Pokemon. Yu-Gi-Oh wasn't too bad. Oh yeah, yeah. How about them Pokemons? Pokemon. <laughs> That was my anime right there. <laughs> the original Speaking of anime. Speaking of anime, did you see uh, for Pokemon uh, Pokemon Black trailer two? Pokemon Black and White. Because that's an anime trailer. Check that crap out. I, I know Clive has seen it. And Techno, have you seen it? Nope. It's on uh, G4's website. It's amazing. They should turn it into a full length movie. And same same goes for Dan. It's very well done. And there's no gameplay footage in it whatsoever. <laughs> it's at all. It, it, it's like it's like I think it's like five minutes of uh, just anime. It's really badass. I don't know if there's any explosions in it though. No, no, uh -oh. no. Screw that. <laughs> there's no big boobs in it. Nope. Screw that. Yeah. Fuck that. It's the point. What's the point? <laughs> What's the point of it? Where's the guns? <laughs> Where's the guns, guns boobs, and the and boobs, explosions? The asses, and explosions. That's fantastic. That's a winning combo right there. Dude. I, I have a question. You guys hate fantastic, right? Yes. Clive does. No, I don't hate it. I just, I don't know, it's just a running joke. <laughs> you hate the fantastic four then. He loves the fantastic Oh, what? <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic Four. Four. Yeah, what about them? You hate them because they have the word fantastic. And no, uh, actually, uh, actually, I like them a lot. That's fantastic. That, that is should be fantastic. That's just a nickname for the podcast, the Fantastic Three. <laughs> that doesn't rhyme. Or it doesn't start with F. <laughs> Plus you can spell it. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. <laughs> no, I guess that's it, fellas. Is that <laughs> it? Yeah. So what is that? Episode forty nine? Yes. In the books. Almost 50. In Almost the 50. books. Next week is fifty. Yeah. Woo! You guys are over the hill. Get in there. Yeah. How's that storm techno? Yeah, how is uh, the storm? I think I think it is not a bitch anymore. <laughs> This I, just said breaking news. It, it moved into my state now. Breaking news. The storm is not a bitch anymore. <laughs> there you go. Episode 49. Thanks for listening, yeah. guys. Yep. Say bye. Everyone, Everyone bye. bye. We love you. Uh, later. Love you. Use your bye, expressions guys. wisely. <laughs>